It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Therat's here. Mary Jo Foley's here. We're in the big room in the big studio today. Coming up, Windows on ARM. Xiaomi has a new laptop, but not Windows on Mac. Why not? We have some speculation. Plus, Defender everywhere. But do you really need it? It's all coming up next on Windows Weekly. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therott and Mary Jo Foley. Episode 782, recorded Wednesday, June 22nd, 2022. A hazy shade of winders. This episode of Windows Weekly is brought to you by Hacker Rank. It's time to reboot your technical interviews with Hacker Rank's easy to use tools. With a pre made question library, code playback, and built in whiteboard, you'll be conducting better technical interviews, instantly identifying the right talent. Go to hackerrank.com slash ww to start a better tech interview for free today. And by New Relic. That next 9 p.m. call is just waiting to happen. Get New Relic before it does, and you can get access to the whole New Relic platform and 100 gigabytes of data per month free forever. No credit card required. Sign up at newrelic.com slash windows. And by Acronis. Keep your digital world safe from all threats with the only cyber protection solution that delivers a unique integration of data protection and cybersecurity in one. Acronis Cyber Protect Home Office, formerly Acronis True Image. Go to go.acronis.com slash ww. Okay, dozers, it's time for Windows Weekly. I know you may be a little confused. It looks like we're on the big boy set. We are. Uh, my office has crashed. So we're here in the... You know how that happens. You know how that. You know how, how it is. That's Paul Therott from Therott.com. His books, The Field Guide to Windows 10 at LeanPub.com. Mary Jo Foley, also here from All About Microsoft.com, her ZDNet blog. And the, reason, the real reason that we're in this studio is because Mary Jo couldn't hear us. And it's, <laughs> but it's it Mary wasn't Joe's my fault. fault. It wasn't your it's fault. Not my they fault. blamed you at first when I first got in, but no. I know. It wasn't People want to blame me, but it wasn't my fault. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're thinking maybe we should just, why don't we just always do the show in here? You may wonder. Well, there's a couple of reasons. One is when I'm in the other studio, I can control the whole thing. And we don't need an engineer uh, running the board. So that's one. And that's about it. <laughs> that's about it. This feels like the deck of the Starship Enterprise. It does, doesn't it? A little it? cottage-like thing we were in before. Well, yeah, and that was the this. My office is basically unchanged from the cottage, you know, mm -hmm. uh, right. with a screen behind me, and and you know, remember Paul in those days? Yeah. You know, you oh was, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. there, if on Twit, it was the same place, but we'd have four people in the screen and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. We come a long way, baby. I don't know if it's better. It's just you know different. It's bigger. It's bigger. <laughs> I can spread out. <laughs> Yep. So let's talk Winders. A new dev channel build out today. How exciting. <laughs> yeah, it's not that exciting. I'm not excited. No. I'm, I'm feigning excitement. I have to say, I got for the first time ever a green screen Yeah. Uh, yesterday. I think it was... I, I don't think <laughs> it was something I was doing. I think it might have been the fault of the laptop because I had picked unplugged it, picked it up, carried it in to show somebody, and as I was yeah. carrying it back, it green screened. You have to understand, as a Windows mm -hmm. user, you, you're trained to believe it's your fault. Right. So, <laughs> yeah. you know. Well, and Microsoft uh, subtweeted uh, the Insider Edition. It said, oh, Insider Edition has crashed. And then... <laughs> <laughs> That's why it was green. Oh, yeah. oh, blue would be... So I thought they were just thinking, normal. hey, no more blue screens of death. They're green now. Well, uh, green is a more positive color. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it is blue if I were using uh, yeah, 21 yeah. H1, but you told me yeah. 22 H2 is good. So I upgraded. I didn't tell you that. No, you were right. I didn't tell you that. <laughs> you were right. Uh, Wait, am I going for two rights in two weeks? Hold on. You right, were so down. right. Settle down over there. And then I rebooted and it said, well, I don't know, we could repair it or you could just, you know, reinstall. And I thought, what? But then I rebooted it again well, and as usual, it just went, oh, oh, fine. I, the, the advice that Windows <laughs> gives you when something goes wrong is almost always useless. For example, when I try to sign in with my finger and it doesn't work the first time, it says, why don't you try another finger? 
Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you know that I've only enrolled one finger and just let me try it again. <laughs> like that is. I have a finger I want to try. This. What's this? I gave you I a finger. finger. I got a finger for you. Yeah, I yeah. gave it to you. Um, well, yeah. I've said that for years on the radio show because people call in. It's so funny. They'll call in and say, yeah, I got a blue screen of death. Shall I read it to you? And I said, no, stop. No. That information is not of any value at all. Nope. I don't even know why they give it to you. X zero yeah. zero one F. And I said that is of use only to the developer. Is he sitting with you right now? If the programmer's there, maybe. But that stack dump, that core dump, big deal. And and the other thing I, I said, a, which is usually there's a, you should get a code like a QR code. You can take a picture of it with your phone. <laughs> What? And he goes to a page on like docs up Microsoft that comes says, Oh, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> Why do they do that? They oh, should just say, not, Look, because and then what I tell good. them is the computer, even if that code were useful, it rarely is the right one because the computer, it takes a while for it to notice the things aren't right. Mm -hmm. And so it's often later down the road that yep. the crash happens. And so the the point the crash happened at yeah. is not that valuable. Yeah. If you could, if you could send the, if you could, I, I could say, well, if you can give me the stack frame and the program pointer, yeah, I exactly. might be. <laughs> right, right. I mean, did, did you think to preserve memory before you rebooted or? Anyway. So. Why is software so fragile is really the, the question we should be asking ourselves. It's insanely you know? complex. Before the show, uh, Paul and I were talking about uh, functional programming and about Swift and so forth and mm -hmm. one of the re one of the things that advocates of functional programming like to say is that it is more robust we kind of went in this mode this imperative programming mode starting with Al uh, c and alcohol and stuff and the idea uh is that you have data here and you have programs here that are operating on the data but the problem is it's very easy to get to to change the data in a way that other sure. parts of the program don't know about and boom it's also easy to, you know, the, uh, to try to access memory you don't have, uh, that doesn't exist or you don't have control of anymore. And all of these cause crashes this is, and security flaws, I might add. A crash is, a, is a, a, but one step from a security flaw. Right, right. Yeah, a security flaw is often a controlled crash. Right. You know, I, um, I, I just feel like this is just a moving target. We were always going to solve these problems, you know, like... Automatic memory management, that, that will solve it, you know, or like just um, like like actual multitasking where it's supposed to be impossible for any application to write over the memory used by another application. This is supposed to be a big thing. Mm. But like I just as we move forward, there's all you still you did your thing and you green screened in this case. And that's what computers are. They, yeah. they just they're fragile. Didn't, I, they didn't just seem, they say, wait, wait, fragile. back in the day in Windows 11, didn't they say at one point we're going to make the error messages more understandable by humans. I kind of remember this was a goal, uh, one of the many goals of Windows 11. Yeah, and nothing's happened sure. on that front, right? Well, the problem is if you this really like, do that, the error message will always be something went wrong. Something went wrong. <laughs> Start over. Because <laughs> it's all it, useless. Right. We are, it's useless. All yeah. this is, yeah. So Fitbit just came up with, is coming up with a feature for paying subscribers that will give you a deep analysis of your sleep, right? So if you sleep mm -hmm. horribly like I do, You'll get some horrible graph of red lines. It will show you all the places where you made mistakes, screwed up during the night. And then it's like, okay, but what do I do about this? Oh, no, we can't help with that. Uh, we, can just show, we can show you what went wrong, but we don't have any way to fix it. And it's like, right, yeah. so I, this is just, I don't need to Why know I that care, I was awake right? for three seconds <laughs> yeah. at two o'clock in the morning. I'm you know, convinced it, now that just, monitoring your sleep is the most, is the best way to ruin your sleep. Yeah, you're yes, worrying about you it the whole night, it. right? You're suddenly thinking yeah. about well, how you're well, sleeping. I, I look at this first thing every morning, and I freak out every no. morning. I have learned not <laughs> to. Yeah. I have literally three things measuring my sleep mm -hmm. right now. I have mm -hmm. three. Three. I have the Serta Sleep Tracker, which uh, is under the mattress. I have the Eight Sleep. Our sponsor, Eight Sleep, does tracking. And I have the Google mm -hmm. uh, Hub that monitors your tracking, I mean, your sleeping. Mm -hmm. So that's three. Mm -hmm. I think that, I feel like there's more. Anyway, I can get a variety of sleep scores. Do they they never match. The they never match. Right. Uh, one says you slept great. The other one says, "Oh, I'm so sorry. I Terrible. just don't try. Don't do anything today." <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's like blood pressure. I, mine, I, I, it is I very think, much like blood pressure. It's just all yeah. over the place. I'll often have like a two-hour gap in the middle of the night, and then I, I say, no, this is wrong, and I fix it, and then they yeah. it fills in with actual data. It's like it actually. I, 
I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why I do this. It, all it does is upset me every morning. Oh yeah, I have the aura and ring. The worst one is, is like I have four. You... I'm tracking me four different ways. Four. <laughs> I forgot about that one. <laughs> no, this is not good. And the Apple Watch, I which do I don't it. wear to bed because no. who needs a fifth way to yeah, say you know I what? Didn't sleep well? I know if I slept well or not. Microsoft is going to solve all of our problems because Windows Update is committed to helping reduce carbon emissions. They're going to save the world. Oh, thank God! So you'll you'll all sleep. You'll all sleep great. Don't worry about it. I think that might be why I don't sleep well. Uh, part of it's <laughs> part of it is age, you know, supposedly. But yeah. uh, sure. although my mom, who's eighty eight, sleeps like a baby uh, all day and then wakes up and cries. <laughs> but that's another <laughs> that's another matter. Uh, I I think that there is a lot of anxiety between COVID, climate yeah, change, sure. Putin. Right. There's sure. a lot to worry about. Yep. There is. So of course we yes. don't sleep well. That's right. That's right. Uh, not to mention, uh, yeah, the start, from what's going to happen? In better call Saul. Right. I mean, I'm very worried that uh, Jimmy. I think. Uh, <laughs> well, anyway, that's another. Why one. did the new Stranger Things season sink so bad? Like I, you know, <laughs> why, why does everyone think Top Gun was a good movie? It was terrible. Uh, I don't know. I can't answer uh, these existential questions. Lisa and I watched Top Gun the other day. I'd never seen it. The original. The original. One? The original. I'd I've never, never seen, seen it. It's either. horrible. It's one of the worst movies ever made. I'm not because it's, it's terrible, horrible. But it's not great. I think really. Oh my God! It has three songs on repeat for the entire movie. Take my breath away. Yeah, yeah. And then there's the, the homoerotic <laughs> volleyball game. Which, oh my God! <laughs> that like that when he like does the biting motion toward him. <laughs> He's like, huff. <laughs> you're like, well, just kiss and get it over it's with. What are you funny. doing? I don't think it's awful. It's crazy. But I think there are a lot of movies that we saw oh, in our youth terrible. that we are nostalgic about and we have kind of a golden glow around them. Star Wars is I, like, no, the I original Star Wars movie. is like that. Yeah. I paused this movie at one point and I said, so this great strategy that this guy has as a pilot, just so I understand what he's doing, he's, he's putting on the brakes. <laughs> So that the other people go, go past him. him. And then he's shooting him <laughs> from behind. Is that what he's doing? Yeah. Because that's the most basic thing I've ever heard work. in my life. I think that would work. They teach that at I Top Gun I think it would school. too until everyone's doing it. And they go, oh yeah, he's, <laughs> like, watch, what? he's going to step on the brakes. Watch. Oh, he did it. We call that the Mav. <laughs> yeah, the Mav. yeah, sure we do. When I read how they shot it. It was a time when we were not at war. When I read how they shot it, which we is... We didn't even have anyone to fight back then. No, no. Who were you talking about? In the new with? one, apparently, the en there's an enemy, but they don't want to say he's Russian or anything, so they just say the enemy. Sure. Because they don't, we don't want to offend anybody. <laughs> we want to shoot their planes out of the sky, but we don't, wouldn't want to offend them. Uh, I, I don't know how we got down this path. I'm sorry, but... I was just going to say, terrible, guys, new Windows movie. build. Oh, 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 gosh, yeah. New, new, it's, you know what? This is a measure Speaking of how... Of things that are terrible. ...inconsequential a new dev channel exactly. build is. There basically. we go. That's correct. There's not a lot to That's say. That's true. That's true. <laughs> um, search one, highlights we can wrap are coming. Search highlights. Well, do you want to talk about the new dev channel build? I'm, the only I'm thing I have a question like, about... Because the, uh, I have a question for you, Paul, yeah. about this build. That thing they talk about, okay. the local administrator feature that is listed in this build, local administrator password, mm -hmm. something, something, lapse, right? They say yep. it's part of Windows now, and it, and one of the things that it'll let you do as an administrator is make sure people aren't reusing passwords. But there's a whole other list of things that it does. Right. So is that in Windows now, or is this new, newly in Windows as of this build? I didn't even, I had never even heard of this feature till today. I have never heard of this before. So, okay, good. Right. I'm glad I'm not alone. I, I yeah. assume because it is, <laughs> yeah, because it is appearing in a Windows Insider dev channel yeah. build, this is something that will appear in Windows down the road. At like some I, point. I have never heard of okay. this. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. I thought it was just me. I'm like, oh, maybe this is some famous thing that people it's are also, to like, oh, it's great. It's very specifically for domain join clients. Yes, it is. So I, I, I suppose. I so it can only go to a subset of insiders then, right? <laughs> yeah, well, it's kind of very limited. Yeah. In fact. Right. Lim very limited set. In fact, that's how they yeah. say it. It's limited, limited to a small set yeah. of insiders, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I know. No, the other That's two things. That's interesting. Like, so in other yeah. words, in this situation. That, that was seemed like it could be a big deal, but I don't know enough about that feature to know if it is a big deal. 
It's not a big deal in my world because okay. I don't really care too much about AAD connected computers. Group but policy? Yes, I mean, it, Are you it, saying it, you don't care about group policy? I didn't say All that. Right. Okay. <laughs> um, but no, I mean, you know, if you're, in other words, the, the notion here is you're connecting to AAD. So your computer is yeah. controlled by some central right. admin, you know, whatever mm -hmm. set of right. policies. Um, you could still tech, I mean, not, it may be prevented, but I guess the idea here is you can create a local administrator account, yeah. which would have mm -hmm. full privileges on the machine. And now they're, right. uh, this is a way to apply policy to that account. It looks like I, I, I've never heard of such a thing. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Good. I'm glad it's not just me. <laughs> the other things were like, there's some new braille related things for narrator and then some additional settings for mm -hmm. OneDrive in your common management page. That's part of windows now, right? What Otherwise is, fixes. Here's the article from uh, Laurent Giré. I like saying his name. Laurent Giré. Yep. Is this, so it tells you now what you're, billing is and your credit card and yeah yeah so yeah. if you're in windows i don't see i forget when things started but i think 2020 20 geez 22 h2 if you go to the accounts page you get information about your microsoft 365 account if you have one this is adding support specifically for onedrive so if you're just paying for onedrive storage or whatever uh you'll get the separate listing there it's just a it it's just a, a way to see and in minor ways probably manage your storage without having to go to the web, but it's, I think it's a nice little thing to have as part of your account. Cause it isn't, yeah. these things are kind of an integral, a part of your Microsoft account, mm -hmm. right? You're paying for something probably, or if you are, you're paying for either a Microsoft 365 family or personal account or for OneDrive storage directly. So this uh, is in the accounts surface that stuff here. settings. So there, uh, if you have other accounts, mm -hmm. you, you'll see similar information about those accounts, presumably. Yeah. Or if you have other things mm -hmm. tied to your account, right? right. So I, I could imagine someday you'll, they'll put your Xbox uh, paid subscription information might be there too. Why not? Because it's mm -hmm. tied to that account, that kind of thing. Yeah. Like today, typically you would go to account.microsoft.com and go to subscriptions and you would see all yeah. that information there. Well, that was a thrill yeah. and a half. There. I know. There really is not a lot going on with that belt. <laughs> yeah. We're lucky we got that. <laughs> so. Yeah. I ain't complaining. Search highlights coming to Windows 11 v12 for some reason. Huh? <laughs> Did I write that right? Yeah, v v12. Did I write v12? V1 comma 200. Oh, v1 comma 200. Two. Okay. By the way, yeah, Paul, so can I ask one thing about your website? Why does okay. <laughs> Why does the cookie banner come up always come up? Doesn't it shouldn't come up it it every come up single time. time I load the it page. Does. It comes up. Yeah. Every single time. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Oh, that should, that's, then that's not working. You obviously don't go to your site very often. <laughs> that's not true. I don't see it ever. I don't, you know? I don't see it all the time. Oh, you might be blocking cookie banners or something smart like that. Something sick. Yeah, I see it a lot too. Every time. To your site. It, yeah. But you, uh, you know, it doesn't surprise me. the list of things me. that are wrong with my website, this is a very minor issue. Oh, I know. It doesn't <laughs> but, surprise me um, um, because after all, you'd have to save a cookie to say, <laughs> to say he already said right. no cookies. But anyway, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, just to, I'm, I'm, I'm throwing that in. I just yep. a free. It shouldn't, it's free. shouldn't happen every time. I won't. <laughs> yeah, I won't charge you for that one. Microsoft <laughs> rolling out search highlights on Windows 11. Yeah. Uh, so search highlights is this distraction thing we talked about the other day. I thought that. Yeah, I thought it was already part of 11. Oh, so it's only in the. It's, it's only been in the preview. It's in 22 so H2. Uh, it actually went back to Windows 10. Now it is coming to the original release of Windows 11 for some reason. I don't, I don't yeah. like this. No, it's a way to tie you into the content from MSN, right? right? And potentially sell ads yes, but, in the But here, see, the thing is, this is it's non-contextual, right? So if right. you're searching for something, it doesn't matter what it is. You, you know, it could be a local file. It could be something. You could search the web from here. Mm -hmm. The point is you went to the search interface for some reason, and that reason is not whatever's in search highlights. <laughs> that, that is yeah. literally just a, here's like, you know, on Father's Day, they would have had a thing about Father's Day, you know, and mm -hmm. they, they every day has a thing. Like some famous person maybe was born on this day. Here's some information about that famous yeah. person. It has so, nothing to do with why you're there. Yeah. So if 
if you currently use this, you can decide whether you want to see web results in, in your search or not. What if you turn off web results? Will you just not see any of that? So you can actually turn this feature off. Oh, you can? You can okay, good. Yeah, you can actually turn it yeah. off. Okay. Which is what I do. And uh, yeah. <laughs> just, in fact, I just you went to what? see what was there today and I have turned yeah. it off. So. Yeah. I think for me, it's too distracting. Like when I search, yeah. I just am going there to search for one thing, usually in my, on my own PC or on my own OneDrive. Yep. Like not. Oh, yeah, you totally. might want to run an app, you know, whatever. Right. Yep. I got my uh -oh. Windows laptop and it fell. Oh no. <laughs> oh, now I'm going to get a green now screen. Now you're going to get a green screen for sure. No, it made a big crash. Maybe other too. colors. Uh, yeah. I'm glad that I wouldn't know it was World Rainforest Day though, if it weren't for. See that, There you go. But it is, this is why I call this a distraction, because like I said, you go in there for a reason, and then you see this information, colorful yeah. pictures and everything. You look at it, you're like, oh. And okay. then underneath it, trending searches. Yeah. Jalon Ferguson, Baron Trump, Little TJ, earthquakes today, and Supreme Court decisions today. This is as useless to me. I don't, I'm trying to get some work done. I don't, it's like saying Well, for squirrel. me, this is enough of a distraction. Yeah. I will forget why I was there. Yeah, squirrel. It's a context. In other words, just the sight of this will cause me to pause for a second, and then I'll look back at the search box and be like, what was uh, I doing? It? Yeah, it's like walking through a door when you're yep. looking for your glasses. Right, someone <laughs> hands you a pair of socks, and you're like, uh, okay. Right. <laughs> Somebody said, <laughs> like, dropping this Windows laptop was a hate crime. No, no, it was an accident. <laughs> it was an accident. Sure. Uh, all right. All right. Now, if I start typing something, it'll give me more inconsequential. It will go away. And actually... The, oh, it'll right. go away. Okay. That's right. And if you access search the oh, way yeah, I normally do, away. which is just open start, and start hit, typing, hit return you'll, as fast you'll never as possible. see it. Yeah. You'll never see it. Okay, good. And if I backspace yeah. out of it, oh, then it comes back. <laughs> I like, by the way, that I just typed in a nonsense search, which is KFDJFKD, and the top result was City of Allentown. That's all right. I typed <laughs> DFGFG and I got a YouTube video called DFGFG. <laughs> That's amazing. There's so much stuff on the internet now that there are, there is there no is. nonsense. Every combination. Yeah. Yep. Not, yep. There's no, Those no monkeys longer are not nonsense. creating uh, Shakespeare. They're creating YouTube videos. Yeah. <laughs> infinite <laughs> monkeys. <Pretty much. laughs> mm -hmm. We have our infinite <laughs> monkeys. They're here, folks. It's called YouTubers. Yeah. On we go. Let's see. Xiaomi launches its first WOA. <laughs> so that's a lot of vowels for a young man. We've all heard the, the <laughs> phrase, two turkeys do not make an eagle. Uh -huh. I can't think of anything less interesting to the Western world than a, a laptop made by a company called Xiaomi. <laughs> and, right. Except a laptop made by Xiaomi that runs Windows 11 on ARM. <laughs> like, yeah. seriously. I, try, I have and, to be honest. Uh, Xiaomi actually makes some, they made very oh, nice no, no. phones. I, that has right? nothing to do with it. I'm sure they make very high quality products. Yeah. I'm just saying, it looks just like interest. a surface, yeah. doesn't yeah. it? It looks like a surface, yeah. It's got a kickstand. The, it's, it's the got weirdest a thing about it is that it does not feature the latest generation Qualcomm oh, Snapdragon right. chip. Oh, that's oh man. <laughs> it's Which one. isn't even a good chip anyway, but it's well, better than. Yeah. Right, like now, we're still not up to anything that's good for PCs. For now they know we know why they made it though. They because they make phones too. They had a lot of leftovers, yeah. and they thought, well, well, let's, put in this. let's put one in a laptop. Yeah, we see got what some happens. leftovers: Snapdragon <laughs> 8CX Gen 2 chips. You uh, know what though, Paul? I, uh, I don't know. I don't know if you've noticed this. So after years of kind of just leaving Windows on ARM out there, not going anywhere. In the past two months, Microsoft is like whipping everybody into a frenzy about Windows on ARM. Um, there's no laptop chips yet that are good for this. It's not, they're not coming right. till next year. But you've got guys like Rich Turner, you know, the guy who brought us Windows Subsystem for Linux and lots of other things. Love him. He seems to be like the point person trying to get Microsoft to port all their apps to oh. ARM and he's really driving this charge. So I'm like, okay, somebody has said to them, okay, guys, we got to get going on Windows on ARM, even though we've been trying I, for years. I, look, I, I, can't, <laughs> I can't explain, the, I would say this year has been notable for the number of Windows and ARM announcements there have been, yeah. none of which are the one we're waiting for, which is that no. new chipset family right from Nuvia. But yeah, I don't know why. I, I will say... Yeah. I. I mean, I give them credit for keeping it going. You know, Windows 
Uh, Our NARM is the thing that began with Windows 8, right, with Windows RT. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's kind of a return to the roots of Windows NT, we'll call it, which was supposed to be a multi-platform in the beginning, Mm -hmm. um, which I kind of like vaguely. I, I... all of the stuff that people talk about when they talk about ARM and its advantages, I, I agree with in theory, 100%. Apple yep. always talks about this performance per watt type of thing. Uh, yep, I, I, I completely understand. But I, I just have this hard time believing we're going to escape the legacy underpinnings of Windows and the apps that run on top mm-hmm. of it, which are all these kind of x86, x64 legacy desktop applications, which are not optimal for these kinds of computers. And yeah. like this computer is a great example. I mean, how many how, how many years are we going to foist another Surface Pro lookalike on people? And why on earth would this one take off where none of the other ones have? I, yeah. I just don't understand. I, I mean, I like the idea. I just don't, I just don't see it. It's not time for it still. I don't know if it's ever going to be time for it. Here's the one good thing about the Xiaomi Book S 12.4. Okay. Apparently That's used by uh, Tom Cruise in Top Gun. <laughs> there he goes. I knew there was a reason we Ironic, were talking about because that. he's almost certainly fighting the Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> it looks so, you know what? They say the Chinese uh, copy our technology. This looks so much like a Surface <laughs> that uh, it basically looks like a direct copy of the Surface. Yep. I'm, I'm willing, how much is it? Uh, 700 euros. Yikes. That's a lot of money. Yeah. I'd almost well, be willing I mean, to buy it just to give it a chance, just to see if maybe it's usable. Yeah, Look at that. It even too. does the click. Sure. <laughs> just like the... Just all like they, the all they need is schoolgirls dancing around with the click. I know. <laughs> click. And by the way, there's no way that 3D rendering is going to be moving as quick as that is on no. an on arm. No. Little, I mean, she, look, she's very serious about this. She's taking it to her TED sure. Talk and everything. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think an architect would really want to use this thing. But Xiaomi, I have to say, Xiaomi makes good stuff. I like. I had a Xiaomi mm-hmm. phone. Oh, no, I, I, and so yeah. did Huawei. Yeah, <laughs> you know? so did Huawei. And so yeah. do they still probably, but yeah. it's just, I don't know. Hmm. I don't know either. I mean, it's only a matter of time before someone in the government notices this Chinese-sounding <laughs> name and starts asking questions, you know? Yeah. How are they getting this technology? Don't we have a... Are we about banning supply the use chain? Of, <laughs> we don't ban all Chinese goods. That would be disastrous. No, no, no. They're using Qualcomm chipsets, which is U.S. technology. That should be banned. Oh. They shouldn't be allowed to use that. Is that true? Yeah. That no Chinese company can use U.S. technology? Well, no, no, no. See, they're not on the entity list. <laughs> right? They weren't big enough to make the list. This, the problem is if they're successful, then they'll get on the list. Hmm. Mm. It's very confusing. Anyway, you don't see you don't you're not going to go to Best Buy and see a lot of Xiaomi products, so it's not like an issue yeah. today. But right. that was true of Huawei too. So I was kind of you know Huawei mm-hmm. their downfall was they made networking equipment. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, and I mean that's, that's more risky. Happened. I mean this this machine is, is not risky. Well, no, but they banned. <laughs> national, I mean they stopped security. They stopped you probably can't buy it if, if you're in uh, you know the U.S. government. I bet you you can't buy this. Sure, yeah. sure. But I don't know. And but why would you want it? You know, honestly, it doesn't matter who makes this. This could be a Lenovo product. Why right. would you want this thing? Yeah, no, mm-hmm. I agree. All right, let's take a little time out. Uh, Paul Therott, Mary Jo Foley. Yes, we're in the big boy studio because uh, <laughs> the little boy studio fell down. Uh, actually, you know what? We should name these after the uh, atomic bombs. We should have little boy yes. and fat boy. Big, was it Big Bertha? Fat no, boy oh, and oh, fat boy. little yeah, man. Yeah. So the little man okay. studio <laughs> is down, but fat boys go on great. Best names. <laughs> no, actually, those are terrible names. There's, they are. They, they are appropriate, but they are they are terrible. Names. Not great. Not great. <laughs> Our show today brought to you by Hacker Rank. I think you know Hacker Rank. All the coders know Hacker Rank uh, because it's a great place to go to get a job as a coder. Great place to hire coders. I go to Hacker Rank because I love the puzzles. I just do. I get, you know, I like to. I like to get a rank and and solve puzzles. But Hacker Rank is a great place if you're hiring talent. If you're conducting tech interviews, you're going to want to know about something they've just done, which is really, really cool. That makes your tech interviews easier. It's hard if you're doing tech interviews, especially these days over Zoom. You have to spend the first ten minutes of your interview just trying to set up an environment to share code from a dozen documents. You're wasting your time. You're wasting your candidate's time. 
Fortunately, HackerRank has developed an IDE, Integrated Development Environment, just for the tech interview process. It's got an easy-to-use set of interview tools. You'll quickly find the best developers for your technical projects. You get some really nice features, a, a pre-made question library with more than 2,500 questions, so you don't have to make them up. <laughs> You'll find the right question to find the right coder. A code playback feature so you can review the candidate's coding approach and score their skill levels. Sometimes they, they go so fast, you know, it's a lot easier if you can do instant replay and see what's going on. And if you want to do a collaborative thing, they've got this great collaborative built-in whiteboard so you can do it together and see how problems are solved. It's kind of the thing you would have if you were doing in-person interviews. But nowadays, we're often doing them over Zoom. It's time to reboot your technical interview process with... Hacker Rank. Click interview done. Start using Hacker Rank for free today. See how much better a technical interview can be. It's time to reboot your technical interviews with Hacker Rank's easy to use tools. With a pre made question library, code playback, built in whiteboard, you'll be conducting better technical interviews, instantly identifying the right talent. HackerRank.com slash WW H A C K E R R A N K dot com. Slash WW, start a better tech interview for free today at Hacker Rank. Thank you, Hacker Rank. And don't forget to use that WW so they uh, know you saw it here. Paul Thorat, Mary Jo Foley. And now it's time to talk about Mary Jo's second favorite, right after Hadoop, <laughs> second favorite subject, Microsoft 365. It is. It is. And this one is a good one because we brought it up just as the code name last week on Windows Weekly. This sure. is Defender. Uh, the product is officially named Defender for Individuals. Very odd name, I felt like. Um, this is another, yet another version of Defender, but this one's for Microsoft 365 personal and family subscribers. So if you have either of those subscriptions, you are going to get this for free. No additional charge. This is the product, Codename Gibraltar, that Microsoft's been testing for the past few months. It gives you a centralized dashboard view of the security of not just the PC that it's on, but also your other devices like uh, Macs, iOS, and Android phones, all in a centralized location. If you, if you happen to have things like Norton or McAfee installed, you'll be able to see that in this dashboard as well. So you get alerts when there's something wrong on any of your devices. You'll get tips. You get tricks. You get the whole thing. Um, if you are not a subscriber and you want Defender for Individuals, you cannot have it. You have to subscribe to Microsoft 365 to get it. There is no other way to get it. Why, why um, would someone want this, though? What's the... <laughs> my no, favorite, seriously. My I, favorite uh, <laughs> feature is... On uh, iPad and iOS, since an antivirus isn't allowed to do anything, uh, yeah. Defender right. will give you tips. Yeah. <laughs> Even though you can't do anything, here's a here's tip. A tip. <laughs> Browsers. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. gosh. You don't um, really need this on any mobile device. Uh, I guess, no. and I don't think you need it on the Mac, but I guess if you're, I mean, you get it for free or do you have to pay extra for it? You get it for free. Yeah. So you're, you're already, I mean, I have, you know, the Microsoft 365, I guess. Yeah. You know, if maybe. you have a consumer subscription, you'll get it. My, my yeah. only thing about this is I'm kind of against adding software that you mm -hmm. don't need, right? Everything yeah. you add to your system right. adds a know, potential right. problems. So, you know, and you know, I don't think you really need this on your, on your Mac or, you, or certainly not on iOS or iPad. I think the main draw of this potentially is the centralized dashboard view. It's not yeah. so much, it's more just like you could have one see place to machines. look yeah, and yeah, see yeah, all yeah. your stuff, yeah. right? The other thing, and now, Steve Gibson actually brought this up, yeah. and it's, I don't know if it does this, but it would be a good thing, is at least it, would, it could look for Windows viruses, and if you're on one of these other platforms, mm -hmm. it would keep you from mm -hmm. sharing malware mm -hmm. via an email. I don't know if it does that. Mm -hmm. I would hope it does mm -hmm. that, right? I don't know either if it does that or not. Yeah. Um, the part I'm most intrigued about it, this uh, product is Microsoft saying some people are going to be at, invited into a beta for this program going forward, and they're going to be adding more features. Identity theft protection is likely one oh, of them. That's interesting. Um, and secure yeah. online connections. 
So I guess there'll be but, some kind of a okay. thing telling you. So is it secure? I, we're going to we're gonna have to dig up a conversation we would have had about Windows Live One Care about a million years ago, which yeah. is why yep. on earth yep. would I pay for a feature that Microsoft should provide for free because it's fixing a problem with Microsoft software? Yeah, I don't well, understand. Well, you can say that about why, all their products, right? <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, why isn't this just part of Windows? Yeah. You know, I, and by the right. way, if it's part of your Microsoft 365 subscription, mm -hmm. how about if I sign in with a Microsoft account that's tied to such a subscription, you just add this to Windows? You know, I don't, this is separate download stuff is silly. I know, of yeah. course, you have to it's, get it done on yeah. the devices and all that. But. Right, you know, it's a carrot to get people to subscribe. That's what it is, right? I don't, I don't like this. That's what it is. Yeah, I don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> Don't like it. Don't Defender's like it a pretty good <laughs> antivirus on Windows, yeah, uh, it is. and it comes with yep. Windows. And you know, I think yep. I think it's as good as any other third party offering. Mm -hmm. And because it's built I, into Windows, yeah. I, think I it's like that. Preferable. I don't have to install anything. Yeah, I, right. I, mm -hmm. That's the, yeah. after a lot of back and forth with should we pay, should we not pay, blah blah blah, whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah. Defender mm -hmm. is part of Windows. It just works. It seems to work great. Yep. That's great. Yep. I think that's great. Yep. That was always the also, way to do it. Also, uh, they do something which I think is good, which is, and it's interesting. I didn't know this, but reading about this, I found out. Uh, mm -hmm. If you install a third-party antivirus on Windows, Defender steps back. Yep. That's right. It does. Yep. It, goes, it says, okay. okay, you have Norton installed, so. Not going to, because you don't want conflicting antiviruses. Right. So, yep. that's good. Yep. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, there you go. That's the story. Probably a story. Probably an you antitrust era concession on Microsoft's part. But yes, that, is, that does. Yeah. But well, it's also going to make for better experiences because mm -hmm. you really don't yep. want two viruses, antiviruses fighting each other. That's what right. is v oh, Viva? We talked about Viva before. Oh, okay. This story. <laughs> you already this know one, I'm I was going to say, I'm, I was curious if you were going to try to defend this one. No. Uh, speaking of things no. I do okay. not well, like. First, what is Viva? Remind me, refresh okay. my memory. So. Viva is Microsoft's employee experience platform. There's all these different modules. It's an onboarding platform. Like if you're yeah. uh -huh. somebody coming new into a company, you can see all the notices about the company. You can have a list of things you need to read that they're saying, read this employee handbook, read this, read this. Here's your learning path. Um, it gives you all these different modules. That are, It's mostly like an HR app, right? It does have yeah. some things in the knowledge management space. So if you're thinking like, who at this new company I just joined knows about Windows? You can type that in and see a list of people who and work it, there who know about I Windows. I think it's fair to say this came out of the COVID era now, we'll call it the hybrid work yep. era yep. where, you know, people are just aren't going into offices like they used to. Exactly. So they need some way of onboarding new employees exactly. who aren't going to yep. come to a place. So Correct. everything she said so far makes total sense. It does. Now describe then, the new thing. <laughs> right. They announced last week, Microsoft announced yep. something called Viva Sales. So when I saw the name of it, I said, oh, there's going to be a sales module for Viva. Nope. It's mm -hmm. not a module of Viva. Does it integrate with Viva? Nope. Does it have anything to do with Viva? No. <laughs> it shares the name? <laughs> Has the name Viva yep. at the beginning. It's worse because it's really a CRM tool. Microsoft it is. has a family of CRM products. Why yeah. isn't it called BizTalk something something? You know what? No, Dynamics. You know why it's not oh, called Dynamics? 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 Right. Because it's meant to integrate with other CRM platforms. So it's going to integrate with Salesforce also. So they thought, oh, okay, if we brand this Dynamics, yeah. it's going to be confusing because what using Dynamics mm. with Salesforce? Okay, let's make it confusing in a different way. Let's use the word Viva in front of it that has nothing to do with Viva, but call it Viva Sales. Uh, the mistake. only... I, I went back to them a few times. I'm like, so can you explain to me why this is branded Viva and they're like, right. we're expanding the brand of what Viva represents. I'm like, okay, but like, what's this have to do with Viva? Nothing. Do, okay, it has the word experience in common, right? Like it's a, sale, yeah. it's a sales assistant, a sales experience. What it is is very cool, actually. It's this tool that uses AI technology. It integrates with Teams. It integrates with Outlook. It integrates with the Office apps. So if you're somebody who's a, in sales and you don't want to have to keep going into your CRM system every time to put little notes in there about when your client's birthday is, what the client wanted last time you talked to them, this keeps track of all this stuff. So it's like a companion app for your CRM system. It's a great idea. Branding Aviva is Microsoft a terrible sales. idea. That would be, <laughs> I, I, I said to them, 
No, you know what I said? I'm like, what about power sales, like power apps, you know, like power apps, power platform. They're like, yeah, Mary Jo, it's called Viva Sales. That's what it's called. (laughs) (laughs) I bet this thing gets rebranded. I'm going to just predict that right now. I don't think this will last. I just think this is super confusing, right? And, okay, they they said there's going to be more of these. So um, Mm. they won't say exactly what the next ones will be, but they're hinting there could be like an IT one. Um, What else did they say? There's going to be a whole bunch of the uh, different ones in this family of Viva something, finance, Viva marketing, Viva finance, Viva IT. They didn't announce these, but they hinted strongly that this is what's coming. So yeah, I, I just... I kept going back to, I went back to them so many times because they gave me this under embargo. And I'm like, so again, why is this called Viva something? Like, what am I missing here? Is there a Viva connection to this? They're like, well, no, not really. No, no. Yeah, because if you know anything about Viva, you would naturally look for this connection. You would. And it's just Yeah, so it's a cool app idea. It's going to go into preview in July. It's going to be out later this year. Um, it's probably timed with the Microsoft Partner Conference, is my guess, since it's coming out in July in preview. That that's um, happening in July, but yeah, the Viva part of this was to me very confusing, very very confusing. Maybe it's just me. I don't think it is. <laughs> Viva sounds yeah. like it should be a pinata company. I don't know, <laughs> exactly. or a paper towel, or maybe right? the balloon company could be called, <laughs> or the Evil Knievel movie, yeah. Viva yeah. Evil yeah. Knievel. Yeah. <laughs> But you know, it's imp- onboarding is a big deal. Um, it is. We're very proud. Michael just yep. got a job with In and Out. Uh, went oh, in cool. to yesterday to you know yep. he got picked up his hat and his pants and yep. he has to watch a, a, a I guess it's a film strip or something on sexual yeah. harassment and it broke, yep. so the, he can't do anything because he doesn't know how to harass people. So he's got he's got a they've got to wait. Can't work there. He just got to wait. <laughs> Until they fix the film strip or whatever it is, had they had Microsoft right. Viva, yep. Well, it'd be he'd be ready and he'd be on the he'd be he on would. the line right now. Yes, he would. Flipping the burgers. Yep. Microsoft will limit access to and functionality of its AI-based face recognition uh, capabilities. I thought they'd already done this. Kind of. Didn't they say well, you taking... can't use it for law enforcement uh, already? Yeah. yeah, but this yeah. is this they is did. going a, a little deeper. It is. So uh, Microsoft has this thing that's like their ethical AI document called the Responsible AI Standard. So yesterday they came out with version two and they made some very granular changes in this where if you're an existing customer using facial recognition or sentiment analysis or anything that you, you know, judges gender or anything using facial recognition, their facial recognition technology, Um, If you're an existing customer, you're going to have about a year to apply to Microsoft and explain how you want to use this so they can say yes or no. If you're a new customer, you have a much shorter time frame, like a week or two before they're just going to say, no, we're not taking anybody for any of these things because we feel like they do more harm than good. Um, So, yeah, it's, it's very interesting because they I remember when Microsoft first came out with sentiment analysis and an app that judged your age. Remember that one where you could put your picture in? That's right. always and, popular. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. that that's another one yeah. where it's like, yeah. And, you know, they admit basically certain races and groups are, are um, because of image yeah. clarity issues, are not being represented oh, oh, appropriately. That's what they're blaming, image clarity issues? Yeah, they are. Oh, Lord. You know what? That might be what happened with the Connect, right? Remember when Paul used yeah. to always talk about the Connect having issues seeing people of certain races, like who weren't yep. just plain. Yeah, we had the, the little Caucasian. girl across the street was black and she wouldn't see her. Yeah. Oh, right. that's that was, terrible. That was it awful. Is. Maybe right. that is right. what happened with the Connect. It could be. And they didn't want to it talk about it. Yeah. Right. Oh, my God. You have to look like yeah. a new moon, uh, I mean, a full moon, or you, we can't see you. You're going to look like a pasty white person from Seattle is what he's oh trying to God. say. <laughs> yes. That yeah. might not. Uh, that might yeah. literally be a lighting thing as opposed to a training yeah. thing. Although it it's li- lighting and room size and all kinds of things. But Yeah, yeah. a anyway, lot of yeah, issues, but, right. But that's the well, connect. But they, the that's reason they stopped giving it to law enforcement is it over... Uh, more often than not, when the per- it's a person of color, oh, it's terrible. Yeah, it will. Yeah, yeah. and I always thought that was, was training, just, though, not to. We just to... started watching um, uh, the new season of that show, Bosch, and this is actually a, a, a storyline. Oh, interesting about mm. facial recognition, mm. yeah. law enforcement. It's because it's and, trained uh, on yeah. white people. 
Yeah. It doesn't understand. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I thought, but now they're blaming. They're actually saying it's a lighting issue. That's interesting. Well, they said they said there's. Well, um, it's one of that's one of the issues. Yeah. Right. As, well, that's part of this, right? Oh, okay. They, um, Potential said, problems with um, lighting, blur, and other image quality right. issues. Yep. Which may affect demographic groups more than others, but that sounds to me right. like they're saying they want to kind of pass the buck on the issue, really. Uh, that well, no, I, they think they're they're not they're just explaining why the results why? are skewed. Right. I mean, right. the, you know, right. Yeah. And they have it. They have a new API called Recognition Quality. So if you use this API, they'll say to you, "Hey, that that image is potentially problematic, and maybe you want to get a better image." Okay. Um, yeah. Good. So yeah, it's all this is good, right? All good stuff yeah. because a lot of this technology is being used in bad ways and incorrect ways. And it's like, just because you can do something, should you? Not necessarily. Right. 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 They're also taking away capabilities, which I find they are really interesting. Mm -hmm. So even if you pass this new bar, you know, they're not going to allow you to infer emotional states and identity mm -hmm. attributes, as I call them, like gender, like, well, you said this, I guess, age, yeah. smile, facial mm -hmm. hair, hair, makeup. Yeah. These things are all yeah. being retired, you know, so they've really, mm -hmm. they've really stepped back, um, you know, from what they were offering before. And they're making it a lot mm -hmm. more, a lot harder to gain access to it as well. They are. Yep. Really interesting. Interesting. I, yeah, you know, because in the past, the, yeah. whenever we've talked about this, it's always been uh, the flaw is in the training data, the, the machine mm -hmm. learning data, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, and that it's not trained with a sufficient number of people of color, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. Now they're saying it's a lighting issue. Right. That's interesting. Well, I, I think I, it's, like Paul said, it's both, it's both, right? It's both. It's more than it's, one thing. They don't right. really mention that. They talk yeah, about well, but, image um, quality. Google's, Google's latest phones added a feature to detect skin color better and right. process mm -hmm. photos better for people of right. color. I, I think this is the same issue. Which, okay. you know, in Image other words, quality. You, you have yeah. all these auto-correct features built into phones and cameras and things, and they're mostly designed for white people. Yeah. No, I understand. You know? I'm just saying and, uh, up to now, it's been widely reported, we've reported, that it's under-representation mm -hmm. of people of color in the training data. Mm. And now they're saying, well, it's not even that, or maybe in addition to that. Although I don't I'd see in addition. in addition. I think it's both. I think yeah. it's both. Do they say yeah. in addition? The photos we have. What's that? Do they say in addition? Sorry. I don't know. I didn't try they're to not skim blaming this blog one post. thing. They're, 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 they're saying it's a bunch <laughs> of things. Okay. It's, okay. <laughs> Yeah. Um, well, that's it's, yeah. it's, it's more data. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I'd I'd yeah. like to hear more about that. Uh, yeah, I think I think the issue, the main thing to know is that they are being much more um, granular in how they look at what these things are that they have and what they can do because they have all kinds of technologies with computer vision, facial recognition, sentiment analysis, right. cognitive services. Like they, have, you can do a lot of things with what they have, and if you're not wanting to do good things, you can definitely use these for evil, right? Like this technology could uh, yeah, easily and, be used for that. And for, with AI-based products in particular, it's yeah. more important than ever to ask why are we doing this, right. not just can right. we do this, which is- No, and Microsoft's classic. been very, especially in the past few years, proactive about this ethical AI stuff They have and standards. people doing this, which is good. This they is do. like A whole Microsoft's responsible AI yeah. standard, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think that's good. They say, yeah, you can't judge a person's emotions by their facial expressions. No. Which, no. Of, obviously... No, people have those faces, right? I mean, yeah. I, you, we all know about this. I mean, I... I always think my wife is angry. There's a guy I see at the gym every day who looks like he wants to kill somebody. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then I saw him, someone walked up to him and he just started talking and I realized... That's just what his face looks like. He's yeah. actually a really happy guy. I always know? think Lisa's mad. But he at looks me. like he's ready to. But she's not. She yeah. just looks that way. <laughs> Guys, right. RBF. Right. It's real. All I'm gonna say. <laughs> yeah, I know what sure. you're talking about for sure. Uh, I have it. I I definitely have it. Like I I'll be looking yeah. at people like. <sighs> yeah, when strangers are like, "What's wrong?" And you're like, "What?" I actually <laughs> you're like nothing. As until I now. get older, I force myself to smile because I realize as you get older. Yeah. Uh, this is why older yeah. people tend to look grouchier. Your muscle <laughs> ten tone in your face is it weakens, right. and so yeah. I'm starting to look like Vincent Gardenia. You know, like I'm going around like this, <laughs> and uh, and I so I it actually actively pull my muscles up and try to smile more so people don't think I have <laughs> resting Gardenia. Why is that guy face? baring his teeth at me? What's going yeah. on? <laughs> That's why you hang upside down every morning on a trapeze. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you worked for Richard Gere. I should be doing that. 
Uh, all right. Yeah, this is actually a very... In I'll read this blog post because... Uh, yeah. It you talks about it. what the issues are, and I think that that's actually right. uh, of real yep. importance. You should read it so I don't have to. Well, <laughs> exactly. I mean, here's why I bring it up. If it's just a training data problem, you can improve your data sets. Right. You but can. if there are issues with, you know, like cameras that can't pick up... Well, you have to... Right. Tr the training well, data sets are, are formed from pictures, right? Right. Like, right. So... Right. Um, but, but most yeah. of which are not taken on a Pixel 6. So those right. pictures are going to be terrible. Right. So it's a different thing you'd have to fix. It's not merely adding more people of color to your training. You have to make sure you're capturing it properly. The pictures and the are problem better. is with things yeah. like Clearview AI, they're just scraping pictures from Facebook and yeah. and the internet, mm -hmm. which are all you know taken with potato cameras. So. And this is like I said right. on this TV show. Literally, the the stop. You know, they have an image from a robbery or whatever, and it's like. You thought this guy was this guy. Right. <laughs> you know, oh, it happens like, all No, the time. I didn't think that. Yeah. We have facial recognition software, and it told us it was that guy. Yeah. And they're no, looking at it like, that's stories. not that guy. Yeah. You can no, tell there's some horrific stories of people being yeah. arrested, jailed. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Because of face recognition technology, they just got it wrong. Yep. Oh, that's terrible. Errors that were originally attributed to fairness issues... The blog post write, reads, were caused by poor image quality. So that's what I'm talking about. Is it fairness or is it poor image quality? Mm -hmm. If the image someone submits is too dark or blurry, the model may not be able to match it correctly. We acknowledge this poor image quality could be unfairly concentrated among demographic groups. That's really interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they have a yeah they have a graphic here that talks about this and you know that's also the problem is that the security cameras are, no, yeah. are notoriously horrible right. mm -hmm. and the police are going well you know it matched well yeah but it was a terrible picture it, you know that didn't mean anything yeah. mm -hmm. okay sorry I didn't mean to interrupt I just uh, no no that's a that's a new I'm new glad data you read into it yeah, yeah. we you know yeah. us we don't have time to read these three thousand I don't either normally <laughs> we, don't, we don't have time to learn about what we're talking about Leo come on we don't come on. <laughs> You have like uh, ten seconds to write a story. It's like, yeah, no, okay, I know. go. That's, yeah, no, I'm, I, I'm with you. Believe me, we sometimes uh, on some of our shows have two or three hundred stories in the rundown, right? Yeah, yeah. and it's like, yeah. well, okay, I'll read it when we're Alrighty. on. Exactly. <laughs> Microsoft said yeah. something, <laughs> something, something, something. Here's something, my hot something. take on that. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute, Sorry. they didn't say that. Oh, <laughs> never mind. I will render a ruling, but you mm -hmm. know. Ask me about uh, Rupert Murdoch and uh, Jerry Hall, and I have an opinion, okay? <laughs> Never mind. There's no real metaverse, but there is a standards organization. Woohoo! Of course there is, right? <laughs> I guess, though, if you're going to have standards, you should start at the beginning. Get ahead of it. Yeah, you should. <laughs> the Metaverse Standards Forum. Is Microsoft in it? They are. Good. Is Apple in it? <laughs> Are they? No. No. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, interesting. Is yeah. Facebook in it? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. Are they? Meta. Oh, yeah, no, they, they are. They NVIDIA, are. Sorry, Microsoft, in Autodesk, Adobe, yeah. Alibaba, Epic Games, mm -hmm. Huawei, Qualcomm, and Sony. Ikea you know and it? Wayfair. Google. Google, AWS. I don't see um, Google or Apple. Apple. And both of them are no. supposedly getting very big in Magic all Leap. This. Nope. Nope. <laughs> interesting. Yeah, instead you get Ikea and Wayfair, right? Well, they've um, got just what I need. I, oh, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> they uh, always do. They always do. Uh, yeah. That's really interesting. So the standards they're going to talk about are interoperability. They, you know, it sounds kind of like the metaverse itself at this point. It's everything. Right. Nonsense. And there's enterprise, <laughs> there's gaming, there's consumer, um, there's web standards, there's so financial what, standards. Like One yeah. concern people have had is that there'll be metaverses from Apple, Google, right. and exactly. yeah. Meta. Exactly. And then yep. Yep. Ne never the twain shall meet. So, you know, yep. it, it's, it's like right. the messaging situation we have now where you just have. Correct. And I don't yeah. want to be a blue bubble in anybody's metaverse. No, That's all I'm saying. you don't. <laughs> no. Yeah. No. <laughs> Um, one yeah. key standard. It does standard include some existing standards groups like World Wide Web Consortium, exactly. the Web 3D Consortium, yeah. right? Yeah. So. Uh, good. All right. And, and, and NVIDIA is very big into it because they're probably making yeah. the chips for a lot of this stuff. And Qualcomm, right. and which Qualcomm. is interesting too, right? Yeah. Yep. But it's very, so, I think yeah. it's, it, so it's good that Meta's in it because they're right now, it I is. think, the leaders. Well, mm -hmm. Microsoft somewhat with HoloLens. Yeah. 
but Microsoft, you really would. Yeah, on the enterprise. You too. would want to see um, Apple and Google involved. But yeah, you would. <laughs> all right. The Metaverse Standards Forum. Well, we don't really know what they're doing, and that might have something to no. do with it. I, I, they could join when they have something right. to announce. They don't like to talk True. about what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. that's I mean, a good point. They both join. Yeah. You know, they join Matter, and they both have smartphone or smart home uh, ecosystems, so mm -hmm. that made sense. But they're still not out in the world with what they're doing in the in the Metaverse. So, right, that might be why to give them the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> um. Let me do a quick ad here, and then we will talk about Copilot. <laughs> now that Christina Warren's at GitHub, we should get her on to talk about it, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah. This has been a little controversial, I have to say. Yep. It, it is. Be. Our show today brought to you by New Relic. If you're an engineer, if you're uh, responsible to keep uh, keeping the servers rolling, you probably have received that middle-of-the-night phone call, the dreaded call. The server's down, the cloud's down, the app's not working, something's wrong. Now, you've got to leap from your bed, your cozy, comfortable bed, and figure it out. And if you don't, if you haven't implemented observability, this may be a challenge. What? Where did it go down? Is it the back end? Is it the front end? Is it global? Is it the server? You know, recently, uh, Cloudflare had a big outage, right? Can you imagine all the engineers are going, you know, we don't know what's wrong, but people can't get through. And 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 if you don't have, again, if you don't have observability, you might not have a way to find out. Is it the network? Is it the cloud provider? Do we have slow running queries? Is it your worst nightmare? I, I pushed a bug in my last deploy. And you got a team probably running around from tool to tool. The boss is on the line. Quick, what's going on? And you're just, your heart's pounding. Only half of all organizations, according to New Relic, have implemented observability in their networks and systems. That means half of the entire engineering world is, is doing this, you know, this running around like crazy. Maintaining network observability is really an issue for companies around the world. But if you have New Relic, you have no problems. New Relic combines 16 of the best monitoring products in one, tools you'd probably buy separately. But because they're all in one stack, they all work together together. You've got this great place to go where you can say what's wrong and find out immediately. There's application monitoring, APM for your apps and microservices. If you use Kubernetes, Pixie is amazing for instant Kubernetes observability. You've got distributed tracing so you can see all your traces across the entire globe. So you know exactly where, oh, it's Cloudflare. You'd know immediately. Network performance monitoring so you don't have to guess where the performance issues start. No more data silos. You get a system-wide correlated view. And that's just four of the 16 tools. And most importantly, if, if you are pushing <laughs> updates, you can pinpoint issues down to the line of code. So, you know, you'll know exactly what happened and resolve it quickly. That's why the dev and ops teams at DoorDash use New Relic. GitHub uses New Relic. Epic Games, more than 14,000 other companies use New Relic to debug and improve their software. It really works. And here's the good news. Whether you run a, a cloud-native startup or a Fortune 500 company, it just takes five minutes to set up New Relic in your environment. And I've got even better news for you. Now you can do it for free. Look, that middle-of-the-night phone call could be tonight. You better get New Relic now before it does. You can you can access the whole New Relic platform and 100 gigabytes of data per month, absolutely free, forever. You don't even need to give them a credit card. So there's no reason not to put New Relic on your system right now. And of course, if you need more, you can get more. Sign up at newrelic.com slash windows. N-E-W-R-E-L-I-C dot com slash windows. If you don't have New Relic you got problems. You don't want that middle of the night phone call to happen. Call new well, you don't have to call. Visit newrelic.com slash windows. And please do the slash windows. I know you're smart. You could just go to New Relic. But if you use the slash windows, then they know you saw it on Windows Weekly. And that makes a big difference for us. Newrelic.com slash windows. I, I think we deserve this for introducing you, right? Newrelic.com slash windows. All right. Speaking of GitHub, uh, Copilot, which for the last year has been in beta, uh, a really cool way to steal code from other open source developers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
is now 10 bucks a month. Uh, you always knew Microsoft was going to come back somehow with this GitHub yeah, thing, right? Exactly. So this, is this the fear <laughs> that we all had? Well, and I, I already saw one user on Twitter saying, hey, I love Copilot. I, I've been using it, but I'm an open source developer and I am not going to pay them because that money does not go to the people who wrote the original code. Oh, right. So okay. hold on. Hold on, everyone. <laughs> Maintainers of popular open source projects get it for free. Okay. Verif verified students get it for free. Okay. Everybody else, 10 bucks per month or 100 bucks per year. This is yeah. Microsoft. They looked over at Stack Exchange. They said 99% of the code people are writing these days is copied and pasted from Stack Exchange. Right. So why don't we have something like that? And yeah. I guess that's fair. But when, when you're copying code from Stack Exchange, there is a person who has put it on Stack Exchange right. as a solution to a question. Mm -hmm. uh, this is this is I, what they're just skimming through open source projects, public projects, obviously. Public projects. And yeah. uh, if they are you suggesting that AI is not writing code to complete someone else's project, Leo? <laughs> oh, what? is that what Microsoft says? This is AI? No, no, that's no. that's well, what I assumed it was when I first heard Yeah, I wish it, so AI were there, this, but, you yeah. know. So they say AI is there. They say it's built on OpenAI's Codex, which is trained on billions of publicly available source code lines. Um, that's how they say So it's trained. Agent. Okay. Okay. Right. But we've seen, uh, maybe it's better, but when it first came out, we saw examples where it was cut whole cloth from the original code yeah. including right. comments this, errors you know this um yeah. th this sounds like the coding version of word saying it looks like you're trying to write a letter <laughs> you know it's like right. it looks like you're trying to sort an array here's an example of that right. code from stack overflow or whatever you right know, uh, you know yeah. uncredited right, right. yeah I, stack it, overflow it probably that's is what very I should have said, not stack exchange yeah yeah um yeah okay Anybody in the chat rooms uh, use Tried it. use yeah, Copilot? I'm curious if people are. So I'd love to talk yeah. to somebody who's a, a coder who's, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. it, it's kind of integrated into I think VS Code and a, a Visual Studio Code. So if, uh, Visual Studio. Yeah. So if you if you're typing, it is kind of like Clippy. Like, yeah, it's, it's the an next extension, level of right? uh, in, yeah. IntelliSense or yeah. whatever they call right. the feature in Visual Studio. Yeah. Here's here's a whole Intelli paragraph. You know, here's a whole paragraph of code that's doing what you're trying to do. And I would hope that programmers, but of course they don't with <laughs> just, Stack Overflow. All you got to type now is like an open curly brace and yeah. then the rest of it just yeah. fills in. You're good. Yeah. Yeah. Based on the comment you wrote above it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Judge in our uh, IRC says it's excellent, especially for C Sharp. Mm. Yeah. In fact, that's oh, Microsoft says that it's particularly good. Oh, well, actually they say Python, JavaScript, TypeScript, yeah. Ruby, and Go, which are all very popular open source uh, languages. <laughs> C sharp is uh, maybe a little less popular. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. I saw someone saying, when are they going to sell you the, the second tool that tells you mistakes in your code that goes along with this? <laughs> that's the tool you need. Right. A lot of languages have linters <laughs> and things like that. Yeah. But uh, yeah. that's yeah, also a hard like thing. Yeah, yeah, there's stuff like that. Yeah. Free for verified students, free for maintainers of popular do they say what popular open source there's product? a whole like thing on their site that explains what i'm qualifies. popular asterisk there's no such thing as the popular open source project i'm popular <laughs> so you'd actually have to go to the copilot subscription against. page yeah. okay and see if you're on there yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's nice i mean it was free until now <laughs> yeah it was right so i'll be very curious to see if this uh, strategy works mm -hmm. same yeah this i mean you know people do it all the time mm -hmm. <sighs> is this the name of a podcast it is the directions on microsoft briefing yes i don't it's even a know podcast what that means. i do <laughs> oh that's yours it's a podcast i do <laughs> what does that mean okay, there, so there's a company in, in kirkland washington called directions on microsoft oh they're a see group i of need analysts. to know that right. ahead yeah, of time you do. so right. it's a briefing so on this company oh i get it i get it i get it i get it so every month I interview one of their analysts about different topics and then we put it up as a podcast. So the one I did this month, I think would be of interest to our listeners on Windows Weekly. It's free, by the way, anybody can go listen to it. Um, it's all about gotchas when you're using Power Platform. So I got the analyst who is the expert on Power Platform and he gave us the top five gotchas to know before you start using Power Platform in your business. 
And man, they're like they've tried to simplify the licensing and power platform, and they've done quite a bit. Microsoft has to fix it, but there are still so many ways that you can get caught and end up paying these giant bills for Power Platform and Power Apps, Power Automate. Like if you if you're not careful and you don't know all the little ins and outs of it, you could definitely get caught and you have no recourse. So he, if you if you listen to this podcast, if you go to directionsonmicrosoft.com and you go to the directions briefing, um, he goes through these five top ones that he's got customers who've been burned by. And it's very good. I think it would be very good if you're thinking about using Power Platform in your organization to listen to this first before you start using it wholesale. Mashed Potato wants to know who does the Xbox segment on this podcast. <laughs> um, <laughs> hmm, is there an Xbox segment? I think it's only Enterprise. Is there an Xbox analyst at Directions on Microsoft? Are they there hiring? There is not. There is not. <laughs> I apologize. Hey, I, I didn't. Question? I was ignorant. I didn't know there was a company no, no. called Directions on Microsoft. There is. See, oh, yeah, that's why these I, guys. Yeah. They, these guys they have so provide much a very valuable right? service. Interesting. They yep. do. They're, they're, they're analysts. On, they are, and experts on licensing. Like if you are in a and big company, and experts on li Microsoft and, licensing in particular. Yeah. It, it is uh, the thing that Microsoft does not explain clearly, ever. It, intentionally, right? Because yep. if you don't know. Yep. Yeah, no. So it's not for uh, investors. It's for people who are doing, no. who are licensing Microsoft. It's, no, for, it's for business uh, customers, uh, right? Got it. All sizes of business customers. Um, and we so we do different episodes I, every every month. I didn't know you were a podcaster, Mary Jo. Who knew? <laughs> That's great. You spoke to Wes Miller a while back about Windows on ARM. What was his takeaway, you know, com, uh, from... Yeah. A, so from that's another episode, we, right? He, yeah. He's very much a doubter on the platform. He's like, it really hasn't yeah. gone anywhere. I don't know where it's going to go. But he right. had some really interesting things to say about ways that you can run Windows on ARM uh, through Parallels and other ways mm -hmm. on M1 Max. He's he's like, yep. he went to Microsoft and he said, give me the exact like legal stance of how you can do this. What's supported, what's not supported. There is no legal stance. That's, the, <laughs> that's no, there the problem. Is. There's a way you oh, can there do it. What? Yes. Uh, well, There's a way you uh, can do in it. In what way? But you're, I mean, uh, but you're unsupported. You're unsupported. Right. Okay. That's right. right. In other words, you have to stay yeah. in the insider program. Yeah, exactly. You do. Right. Okay. Um, so, you know, and you, well, you don't even have to stay in the insider program. You don't have to be in the insider program, but if you run it, you're at your own risk. Yeah. Like, There's no support. Yeah. So you for can't, most businesses, I mean, most businesses aren't going to um, want to do this, right? Because if you if you want to use it in a business and they and then something goes wrong, Microsoft will just say it's not supported. Sorry. Yeah. That may change, is, right? Like that may change at some point. But <laughs> the parallels implied to me a year ago that this me was too. going to change, and I Same. think something didn't something, come through that was supposed to. Agreed. No, Microsoft yeah. didn't play along. That's why. They well, never released. So very clearly, we're talking about doing it because they said right. that they, they couldn't say, Microsoft look, it's happening. Would, they thought there would they be. They literally, yeah, they told me, they said yeah. late August, early September, yeah. we're going to have some good news to no, share. No, I remember that. And they also said yeah. pending a deal with Microsoft. They yeah, needed Microsoft go, to play happen. along, which didn't right. happen. So that's so episode there, five. Actually, I know a lot of our yeah. audience would be very interested in that. The wind, it's called yeah. Windows right. on Mac, directions yeah. on Microsoft. It is a, it is a sad yeah. reality. That the best way to run Windows and ARM today is through virtualization, through parallels on an M1 right. based Mac. It right. runs better so than there, any native hardware yeah. solution. There were rumors about why Microsoft wouldn't support this. And one rumor that Rich Woods at um, XDA Developers continues to mm -hmm. talk about is he said is Microsoft had an exclusive deal with Qualcomm, right? Uh, so okay. when That's Apple right. came out with the M1 chip, right, that. it was like, eh, That's we're not right. supporting that, right? That's right. <laughs> Um, but that exclusive deal is over when that, when he revealed that, I think it was at the yeah. end of the line on that. Right. So yeah. now we have so that another may change. question. Yeah. You know, once there's an ISO of, of this, then you'll be like, yeah, okay, the, maybe the deal's over isn't. now. Right. Right. Well, that's the there other, isn't that's yet. The other thing. There isn't. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There isn't yet. Yeah. And by the way, not to get off on a weird tangent, but here's something to consider. You can enroll any PC in the Windows Insider program, and you can choose between right. the dev, beta, and release preview channels. Mm -hmm. If you do so in the dev channel on a normal computer, like an x86, x64 computer, it's kind of a one-way dead-end street in the sense that if you want to go back to the normal stable channel, you have to reinstall Windows from scratch. But that's easy. You can download that from the web. 
your computer will automatically activate. It's, it's just works. It's fine. Every once in a while, there's a window that opens where you can go from de dev to beta. And once you're in beta, you can do what Leo is doing, which is say, you know, flip that switch that says, hey, when this version of Windows is released, put me back on stable. And so that there's a kind of a, it's a little complex, but it's an out. You, it's a way to get out of the insider program. If you do this on a Windows on ARM device, you're screwed. There's no ISO. So if you put yeah. your machine in dev, you're dead, you're dead in the water forever. Like you're stuck there forever unless you think during, unless you can figure out one of those windows and then work your way back that way. But there is no way to pave this thing from mm. orbit and uh, install mm -hmm. from an ISO. Mm -hmm. There are, you know, enthusiasts made ISOs, but I mean, Microsoft will not give you an ISO. It's a very strange situation. Yep, it is. And no one has explained for Microsoft really, like, why not, right? Like, that's the big question, why not? And if it's because they have some kind of an NDA, you know, secret agreement with Qualcomm, that may be why, right? Yeah, but I don't understand. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I know. I don't know. So if, it, if, that, if that agreement did happen, it should be over soon or maybe already over. So something should change, right? Or the thing that changed was Qualcomm came back and said, no, we're buying Nuvia. This yeah. is costing us a lot of money. Yeah, Let's maybe. extend this thing. You know, right. I mean, I I, yeah. I feel like... It, I feel like we I, don't, I don't know if, it, if that deal ever happened for sure. We like, don't, we don't know, know 100% yeah, that, for that's sure. Right. That's right. right. Well, right. But as soon as that story came out, there were companies, Samsung and uh, I don't know if it was MediaTek, one of the other companies publicly expressed interest in supporting Windows mm -hmm. on ARM for some reason. Right. Um, yeah. But, you know, Qualcomm has invested untold billions in this project as it is. They purchased mm -hmm. Nuvia. They're spending two years getting these things to come out. You could imagine they're not necessarily interested in having a lot of competition, you know, yeah. at this point. They've spent right. so much on this. And it wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me to discover that they, they yeah. if there is such a deal, it was extended for that reason. Yeah, it was a 2016 yeah. deal. And so that's why people are assuming that maybe in 2021 it ran. But I do know mm. Rich Wood says in the original article, one thing I wasn't able to learn is when the deal will expire. Mm. So, yeah, it could still be, it could still be effective. Yeah. Imagine if Which would explain does that. All, that, all that work to get, all, to get everything to where it is. And then Microsoft's like, all right, other companies can do it now. Yeah. yeah. You know, or, but imagine Parallels, with it. who is fully expecting Microsoft, uh, Microsoft right. to offer an ISO. They very clearly were expecting it. Yeah. Very, yeah. Not, not just were. an ISO, but the ability to um, activate it and make it yeah. real. Yeah. Have support you know? from yeah. Microsoft. Yep. yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Interesting. Very clearly they thought it was happening. Yeah. So as good as the direction on Microsoft Briefing podcast is, there's one thing it doesn't have that <laughs> we right. have. And that What's is, that? ladies and gentlemen. The gamification of everything, baby. <laughs> the Xbox segment. <laughs> Paul Thorat. <laughs> and after all, somebody's got to feed Sirachi, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is actually kind of an interesting week. So, you know, Mary Jo, we've been just talking about Windows and ARM. And one of the things Mary Jo mentioned up at the front of this, uh, the show was, it's kind of weird. Like all of a sudden this has gotten a lot of attention, especially given that no one's really using it. And the other thing at Microsoft that's a little bit like this in the same sense that like, there's not really a lot of people using it. It is sort of seen as the future, but you know, we'll see is that Xbox cloud gaming service, which is uh, formerly X cloud, which is part of Xbox game pass ultimate, which is at $15 a month subscription. So Xbox, Cloud gaming, there's been a lot of news around that this year as well. It's heading to more and more devices. Microsoft kind of infamously and notoriously canceled their little streaming stick they were going to do, but they're going to put it on smart TVs, and we know it's it's going everywhere. But one of the places you can play it today is on PCs, and that's really interesting. And soon you'll be able to play games from your own catalog. That's super interesting. But if you want to play on a PC, of course, you don't necessarily want to use a controller. You want to use a keyboard and a mouse. And so that's actually coming soon, according to uh, uh, a leak, I guess we'll call it, uh, via The Verge. So, um, well, I guess it's not a leak. I guess it's official. I'm sorry. It's not a leak. But um, there is a, Microsoft is working to uh, reduce the latency, um, which is the thing that's killing Xbox uh, cloud gaming today, at least for me, and optimizing it for the different platforms on which it runs. And one of those ways they're going to do that is to bring keyboard and mouse support to the PC. And I think this kind of puts it over the top. So 
That's cool. So we'll see, you know, if and when that happens. Right. When are they going to add dog support? Because uh, that would dog really... Dog support? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Only a dog would put up with that. Dogs are so dumb. It's not dumb. It's, it's like loving. We're showing an animated <laughs> gif of a uh, of oh, a boy. Xbox controller. Probably people have seen this because it's I've seen it many times. Yeah. So that's it? the old Xbox controller. So I think when yeah. he rubs his nose, it's taking a screenshot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad it's not a cat. That's all I'm going to say. Oh, the cat um, would never put up with that. No, but we do have an animated gif of Mary Jo uh, filing her uh, stories uh, and working for <laughs> <laughs> this that, is, looks, that looks surprisingly accurate. The only problem is it's on an Apple computer, and we know yep. you would never. Yeah, well, that's, so that's how that we know it's a it fraudulent. Away. Exactly. <laughs> That's how you know it's from. <laughs> that was the tip off. Yeah. The Mac. Yep. It was. <laughs> <That> was it. <laughs> uh, all right. Back to Xbox. Uh, I mean, unless yeah. that was it. You, you're done. No, you're no, done? no. There's more. Oh, okay. Um, I don't. Oh, that's it for that particular story. But yes. there's more Xbox. Yes. Um, so I don't know why this is news today because this has actually been a problem for over a year now. But Xbox wireless controllers are actually really hard to find right now because of you know the typical supply. Uh, disruption issue. So Microsoft has come out with a, a statement about it, and they're like, yep, it's, this is the thing. We're working as fast as we can to fix this. Check your local retailer, blah, 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 whatever. But I, I had to buy a, a replacement controller last year. I waited like six weeks for it. And when you went on Amazon or whatever, the, pri the prices were all inflated and everything. I don't think this is a new thing, but I guess somebody, an online publication, or actually it might even be a print publication, asked them about it, so they issued a statement, and they're like, yeah, no, this is... Um, this is a big problem. I guess it's worse in Europe than it is in the U.S. But I've had I've had serious problems getting Xbox controllers, and it's it's tied to that component shortage. It's so weird this supply chain thing. I mean, we were talking about this on MacBreak Weekly yesterday. It's not just It's not just. It could be anything. It could be. Well, this is like twist yeah. ties for your garbage bags. I mean, it's just. Yeah. You know my I, just, I, my dry cleaner. This. I bring back the hangers. Uh, right. After uh, you know, I bring back in the shirts. And uh, he says, thank you, because we can't get these anymore. Right. Yeah, we recycle our egg cartons with the local same people. Same thing. Because same issue. Yeah. Supply chain has just gone yep. mad. Yep. You know? Yeah, I think we're, we're basically playing supply roulette now, where it's like, what is yeah. not available during this particular time frame? I think this is going to be the way it is for a long time. Yeah, I, maybe forever. Maybe this is the new normal. I don't know. But, yep. uh, you know, we, yep. we kind of went all in on this just-in-time manufacturing uh, and it's very, it turns out, fragile. Yes. And, uh, and our kids are going to, when they talk about the good old days, the good old days are going to be when you could just get anything you wanted the next day. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. no matter what it was. We were, it's going to we sound like so science lucky. fiction. They're going to say, yeah. you turn on yes. the tap and water came out. It's amazing. <laughs> Let's hope it doesn't go that far. Oh, God. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Lord. Yep. Far Cry... Five. Yeah, so it's the, well, it just was the middle of the month, so Microsoft announced the next set of games uh, that are coming to the console over the second half of this month and then into next month. And actually, uh, the last of these games, which is coming out on July 1st, is Far Cry 5. I I think, I want to say that's the most recent version. It is the most recent version I've played. It's a great game, actually. So it looks, yeah, one. I like Far Cry, and uh, yeah, yeah, most of those good. games are actually really good. Yeah. yeah, so that's the big, that's the biggest one to me. But FIFA twenty twenty two is in there. Um, a couple, uh, three Shadow Run games. That's nice, interesting. If I'm not mistaken, the original Shadow Run, I think, was the first cross play game that went to Xbox. I think you could play it across. It was the three hundred and sixty at the time, probably. Yeah, Xbox three hundred and sixty and PC. I think I, I believe that was a cross play game a million years ago. But the, not these games. These are more recent games. Uh, Shadowrun Returns, Shadowrun, Dra Shadowrun Dragonfall, and Shadowrun Hong Kong. Okay. Nice. And then finally, um, speaking of ways to improve PC gaming, uh, the Xbox app on PC, which is the way you access that Xbox cloud gaming service, by the way, um, has added a performance indicator. And the idea here is that before you download a game, it will say, hey, this game will play well on your PC or PCs that are similar to your PC. Or, oh, or I like that. Right, so you don't. Yeah, it's smart. It's uh, very, it's kind of like the old, you remember Windows Vista introduced, I think it was, yeah, Vista introduced this notion of like a, like a, you had PC performance profiles and control right. panel where it would tell oh, you yeah, I remember that. Score, you know? Yeah. The Windows Experience Index he pulls out of his behind, um, or WEI. <laughs> very good. <laughs> I'm impressed, <laughs> Paul. 
Yeah, you get a score for your CPU. You can't GPU, remember what you were doing when you pressed the search key, but you sure can remember <laughs> the Windows yeah, experience uh, the index. Esoterica from Windows <laughs> Past. Uh, that's just common sense. It's good because, you know, you look at a game, you're like, yeah, I might want to do this, but, you know, make sure your PC is good enough to do it. So, yeah. Smart. Yeah. It's good. What was the game? Okay, this just in. Hold on. We have yeah. to have a quick yep. update here. Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. Windows on ARM update here. Oh. Our friend Taro Elhonen, who listens mm -hmm. all the time to us, said there was a Q&A and somebody asked Microsoft about Windows on ARM licensing, image ISO availability, and VMs. Um, they said, we will be sharing details later this summer in terms of licensing and acquisition of both the Volterra devices and other options in terms of ISO availability, VMs, etc. They said this at built. Hmm. Okay, that's... That's, so this summer, that's we should more than something. they've said. That's better than we have nothing to share. That's correct. You know? Yep. So something is going mean, to be said. For Microsoft, that's actually pretty transparent. <laughs> so, it is. So this was in a build session. Does he? Is he yep, there? Now? Did, did we know who that was or what the session was? I wouldn't um, He tweeted it to us so you can get a link on okay. it. Okay. Okay, cool. Yep. Good. Thank you. Good, good, Tarot. good. Yep. That's good. Somebody Very actually helpful. went to the sessions. <laughs> There's so much information. I've in watched those, right? several of those. Actually, yes. I, this last build was one of the best builds in recent years that I can think of. It was a good show. It's so it's great that they're on focused. demand now because you can watch them. You can go to all of them if you want. You can. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Just think that's really great. Yeah. Have you ever played Horizon Zero Dawn? No. Do you know this game? Paris Martineau was singing. Well, the new one just came out, and uh, she was singing its praises on uh, Sunday on Twit. Hmm. And it's uh, it's available for uh, Windows, but uh, not what the type of game is it? Uh, the plot follows Aloy, a young huntress in a world overrun by machines. I'll it's just stop you right there. That doesn't sound like a Call of Duty game, so I probably <laughs> have not played that. <laughs> What's what what she loved about it is it's like at the d d distant future. But you, yeah. you, you can kind of see remnants of the uh, of the former world in it. I love that. That was my uh, the sort of Shannara, which is not the way you say say that. But in the very beginning, there's this indication that the world you're in is actually the yeah. remains of Earth, and it's like the skyscrapers yeah. are sticking through the ground. Yeah, exactly. I've always been. I love that kind of stuff. Damn dirty oh. apes! You did it! Exactly. You did it! <laughs> Yep. Yeah. The new one is only. I know why you don't know it because it's PlayStation basically, and the new one's PlayStation yeah, only. Right. But and I, I can't, which means I can't play it. But the old one I can play on Steam, so I might. <laughs> All right, I just thought I'd get it, you know, from my game guru. You're my game guru. I shouldn't be. I'm sorry. Um, oh, Far Cry Six is out. In fact, Far Cry Six yeah. is the oh, one actually, that has uh, the guy from uh, Breaking Bad in it. That's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. That one I've not played. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So it's the older, uh, it's San, last, San, last what's that guy's name? San, San, San Giacomo or something? Yeah, um, oh, he's so good. He's he is so the good voice of the Sonos Sonos voice assistant. What? Yes, now I'm going to hey, use Sonos. the uh, Sonos voice yeah. assistant. That makes it voice. interesting. Huh. You yeah. don't want to cross him, though. He's like, you know, he'd be like, I want to listen to some dance music. He's like, I listen to rock and you like it. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, okay. Would you like some chicken with that? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's uh, back of the book is next. We've got a tip of the week, an app of the week, an enterprise pick, one and two of the week, and a beer of the week. I'm happy to say, all coming up in just a moment. We're in the big room with Paul Thorat and Mary Jo Foley. It's Some, scary. Something went wrong. Mary Jo couldn't <laughs> hear me in the little room. It is it is scary in here, isn't it? It wasn't my fault, though. Just say that. <laughs> no, in fact, you, you would were maligned because the first thing they said is, well, it's Mary Jo, we, we're sending her audio. And then they said, oh, <laughs> we're not sending her audio. Uh, never mind. So apologies, Mary Jo. Look at how big no the big problem. room is. I know. Wow. Yeah, it's gigantic. <laughs> You've been in here. Yeah, I have. Yep. You know, Paul, has, have you ever been to the uh, newer studio? Not Street? the new one, no. no. It's not as big as the original mm -hmm. brick house. That thing was cavernous. Yeah. yeah. Right. Now a tiki bar is opening next door. <laughs> and really? now I'm sad that we're not there. Yeah. 
There's going to be a tiki bar in Petaluma. Next time you're in town, we'll all go to the tiki bar. Wow. Interesting. Because okay. I know it'll close within minutes. That place is, <laughs> seriously, the, the, there, were, there were three or four restaurants in there while we were there that just, and right. two they of just them. came and went. Two yeah. of them, they walked away. The tables are still set. I was watching the flowers slowly die. It was sad. Oh, jeez. They didn't, it was like, well, oh, we're out of here. Yeah. So, and meanwhile, the most successful breakfast place in all of Petaluma is just across the street. So I don't know. Is it location? I don't know what it is. Uh, anyway, enough of... <laughs> I, I'm not, honest, swear to God, not in the Petaluma Chamber of Commerce. I am not, I am, I am not promoting Petaluma, except it's a great place. It's a great place. And you should come visit us and have some beer. Uh, beer coming up, but first a word from our sponsor, Acronis. Acro you know Acronis. For years... We were recommended and often used a Cronus True Image, going back many years. Uh, it was the you know drive. It is the drive imaging tool. Well, they have now bundled True Image into a new product called a Cronus Cyber Protect Home Office that protects you all in one. Everything you need to keep your digital world safe, not just from hard drive failure and coffee spills, but from cyber threats too. It's the only cyber protection solution that delivers a unique integration of data protection and cybersecurity in one. Everything you need to safeguard your device. Windows, Mac, Android, and iOS. You get quick backup and recovery. That's one of the best things about True uh, Image is, is it's so quick to get everything. All your apps, all your files, your configuration, your installation, your passwords, everything saved in one file, which you can restore almost instantly within just a few minutes. It's, what, it's why we used it uh, on the TV show, because if it crashed on a live show, we've got to get it back up and running fast. So we'd always have images ready to go uh, on the second drive on our computers. Now they have a, you can not only back up to that second drive, but you can also back up to the Acronis Cloud. So you've got that kind of quick restore available from the cloud as well. You can also restore individual files, which is really great. And you can use a Cronus Cyber Protect Home Office to create direct cloud-to-cloud -cloud backups of your Microsoft 365 account. You don't have to download it and upload it. It just goes cloud-to-cloud. -cloud. And that includes your Outlook.com mailbox and all the contents of your OneDrive. So really, these days, with modern Windows... It's not enough to back up your local hard drive. You got to back up your OneDrive too, and this is it does it automatically. You also get advanced cybersecurity, which will stop any cyber attack from damaging your data, your applications, your systems. It blocks attacks in real time before malware, ransomware, or crypto jackers can cause damage. You'll also find any hidden infections that may be lurking on your system with flexible antivirus scans. That's really important if you're doing imaging because imaging backs up everything. And if you've got malware in your system, it will back that up unless you have a Cronus Cyber Protect Home Office. You want to, it scans before you do the image. How important is that, right? Easy management because you've got it all in one tool. Reduce the cost, the complexity, and the risk of using multiple incompatible solutions. You'll simplify your protection by managing everything through a simple, intuitive interface. And with a Cronus famous two click setup and set and forget options, You'll spend less time messing with the computer and more time just rest assured that your entire digital world is protected with integrated protection. A Cronus Cyber Protect Home Office. If you're going to image, you need to scan it first. It's more than just a backup. It's more than just an antivirus. It's peace of mind knowing your devices and backups are protected. Your data is safe, accessible, private, and authentic. And, of course, secure. Keep your digital world safe from all threats with the only cyber protection solution that delivers a unique integration of data protection and cybersecurity in one. It used to be a Cronus True Image. It's now a Cronus Cyber Protect Home Office. This would really make sense to add this to True Image. So, and, and I love it that you can back up cloud to cloud your Microsoft 365, your Outlook mailbox, and your OneDrive. That, that's a total solution. Go .acronus.com slash www. Again, go.acronus.com slash www. Uh, this is for anybody using Windows or Mac or iOS or Android or all four. This is a great solution. Go.acronus.com slash www. Now time for the back of the book. We go back to Paul Therott for his tip of the week. 
Yeah, so I, <laughs> I mentioned this a few weeks back, but I had written, or I now have written a series of articles about the new features in Windows 11 version 22H2. I think there were probably 12 or 13 articles. Um, and this kind of raises that issue that I think Mary Jo was asking about a few weeks ago, which is, is this in some ways a major release or what's what's going on here? And I got to say, overall, uh, no. But this is <laughs> right? surprising. I mean, you've I, got, I look that, how many articles you've got. I mean, there's yeah, a lot of stuff. Yeah. I'm going to have to well, read I, all yeah, of this. You know? I, so I think I am of two minds of this. I mean, for one thing, there are so many things I, I, a lot of us would have said they could have done and didn't, which I think is a little shocking, <laughs> you know. Um, of the things they did do, there are only a couple that strike me as being kind of major and important. I think the additions to Snap are particularly good and the accessibility stuff, especially live captions. Like So system-wide live captions is kind of amazing. Um, and that means you could, you know, it's not just for audio and video content. Like if you're watching a movie, like on YouTube that doesn't have captions, or whatever, you could be doing a live video chat with somebody using an application that doesn't support live captioning of, you know, real time content or real time conversation. And it will live caption that it's, it's, um, it's, that's neat. Um, does this warrant like a new product version? I don't know. It's, you know, it's the way we're doing. Hey, this Apple this would thing. do it, you know, I mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a bunch you of little things. You also don't know, but you know what? You just still don't know if um, tabbed yep. File tabs. Explorer is yep. going to be in yep. there. Yeah, and that, that's the other thing. It's also like a, it's a hazy thing. So, yeah. you know, build, the, the build that is uh, 22H2 is evolving mm -hmm. still. And yep, yep, tabs is one thing. There will be new features added in over time. It's kind of a moving target. It's hard to point to something and say, this is it. If you buy a, a new Windows 11 based PC, you know, in, in December, let's say, and it comes with this version on it, well, I bet one of the first things you'll do is turn the thing on. It will update, and there'll be a couple more new features added to it. So mm -hmm. it's kind of hard to say, but it it it, it puts Windows in a, to me, you know, just being old school and being having been around for such a long time, it's weird for me because when I think of things like Windows 95 is this thing, you know, or Windows Vista is this thing. And yeah, they updated those things over time too. But Windows 11 is the haziest version of Windows, I think, ever. And and this ver second version, so to speak, I think really highlights that nicely because, you know, the, the apps are all on their own path. They can update the operating system in different ways now and will and have in the past. And that kind of proves it. And the sets thing, I think, or not sets, uh, the, files, uh, the file explorer tabs. Uh, I think points to that as well. So you should. That could be the title of the new book: "The Hazy Shade of Windows." <laughs> yes. <laughs> Speaking of which, I know a lot of people have been waiting for the Windows 11 field guide. Oh uh, yes, I did uh, build my first test <gasps> version of the book on Lean Pub over the week. Uh, no, actually, I did it last night. I'm sorry. Um, so it's still uh, you know, by July ish. You know, all right. right. We'll, we'll get it out there. I so got to ask you about this coming. too. I'm looking at your mm -hmm. article on accessibility. And I see you and Stephanie. Are you recording a, a YouTube video here? Yeah, we have a couple of videos we made about the Mexico apartment. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. So, like for people who are looking to buy in Mexico, like a how to thing or yeah, things to or watch how out not for. To in many ways. Uh, <laughs> in oh, most that, cases. I'm so glad you did that. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Is that uh, youtube.com slash Paul Therot or? No, Therot? it's. Um, uh, Where would I find you that? Know, YouTube doesn't. We don't have enough users to have like a custom. Well, I'm going to get you a thousand users. You get a custom uh, URL. So just search for a Therat, maybe. It, you could search for Eternal Spring. Really? We probably do it. <laughs> um, uh, really? Okay. Eternal Spring. Eternal Spring. Uh, no, I'm afraid there are far too many other no, things. It will, it will, no, it should be there. No, it's not near the top. Huh? There's right, a lot of eternal it. springs. Uh, yeah, there sure are. Hope Springs Eternal? Is that what we... <laughs> look, there's even a Joe Rogan. Where does God fit in an infinite universe? Right, I don't know. And then Kataro's Eternal Spring. And All right, well, I like to this <laughs> stuff on, on Twitter. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know where my stuff is. Maybe if I do it, Eternal Spring Therat. Well, because you get, you know, they give you like a baloney URL that I couldn't possibly receive. Oh, I get. Yeah, no, I know. But if you get a thousand subscribers, you sure. can have a custom domain. Yeah, okay. What? <laughs> so, 
I'm yeah. just I mean, trying to help at, you this here. Isn't, this isn't my next get rich get rich quick scheme or anything. I'm, it's, hey, you could be living in to... uh, Portugal soon. It's great. Wow. Um, <laughs> buying in Probably Mexico. Let's see. Maybe I'll if I search for. Yeah, there it is. How we. Per oh, it does say Eternal Spring. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> All right. Paying bills. Don't do what we did. Money transfers and how we purchase mm -hmm. a Mexico. This is good stuff. Mm -hmm. I think everybody should do this. If you've solved a problem that yeah. people have. Well, the re so the reason this kind of came up was um, a year ago when we started researching this stuff. There is no, there's no like Rick Steves from Mexico. Right, know? right. And these days, uh, there are books. A lot of them are really out of date. There are YouTube channels. A lot of those are either retired people or really young people with no responsibility who, I, you know, it's interesting to see the places, but they don't really have very good perspectives to us uh, and they're certainly not buying property so there's just not a lot I don't know there's not a lot of stuff out there for this particular and thing and you put so. up a lot of videos of I mean this is this is great a lot of it's just kind of filler videos yeah no no that's fine it's more than you know on my YouTube channel uh, <laughs> and you've got 305 subscribers so you're close once you get to uh, sure. to a thousand you can have youtube.com slash whatever you want including a general yeah, spring yeah, yeah. probably until, unless somebody gets it first. Well, I'm sure Eternal Spring is taken, but we'll, right. yeah, we'll figure something out. Paul and Stephanie's Eternal Spring. <laughs> How cool. I, You know what? I'm glad you made that because I'm going to be your neighbor upstairs and I want to know ahead of time <laughs> what to expect. Right. Um, oh, I completely sidetracked this. <laughs> Go to therot.com. Do you have to be a premium member to, to, to read this series of uh, no, no. articles? Okay. No. Nope. Um, New in 22H2 search will actually give you a, a yeah. whole bunch of them. Nice. That's the that's the that's all of the slug for all of them. New in 22H2. And I got to read it because you made me. <laughs> okay. It's your fault. App of the week. Well, you know. There you go. App of the Epic. week. Epic. So, yeah, someone else had asked me, someone had, was talking to me about reading stuff, and they were, they were trying to make the case for the Kindle, and, you know, I... I get it. I get why people would be interested in the Kindle. I was I used the Kindle for many years, but the problem the problems I have with the Kindle are many. Um, but some of the key issues are the Kindle devices, like the ebook readers, don't even support all of the content that Amazon sells for Kindles. A lot of them require uh, you use an app on a computer or a, a tablet or a phone or whatever, which I think is kind of bizarre. They don't support color, obviously, which is kind of an issue. And more to the point, you know, Kindle content, whatever that is, books or periodicals, that is not most of what I read, let alone all of what I read. I mean, a lot of the stuff that I read is just through online services or whatever. And that stuff is either impossible or hard to get to on a Kindle. And so I do all of my reading on other devices, typically an iPad or my phone, you know, obviously as people do. But I, I wrote an article, I did write an article about all this and about the stuff that I use, what I read every, you know, how I read every day, where I read, you know, where I go to for things. But when I think about this stuff, I mean, honestly, when it comes to reading and actual reading, and I think these days a lot of people don't do a lot of reading, <laughs> you know, uh, especially long form reading. I think the two that I use the most are probably the Google Discovery feed, which is the Google app if you're on Apple, um, or just the thing off to the left of the home screen on Android. I get a lot of I get a lot of good content through there, but I always push it into Pocket, and I use Pocket for a lot of things. Um, I use Pocket because you can read without all the distractions, which I really like. But Pocket is also a good source for long form articles that are high quality, and I think that's one of those things that's just disappearing from the web. And um, it's I use Pocket to me too. That, I love Pocket. Yeah, I love Pocket. Yeah, and I use it for everything. I mean, it's like a kind of a research dump kind of a thing. Um, you know, when we were researching Mexico, I still have a lot of stuff about Mexico in there, for example. Um, but it could be anything, you know, device reviews or, um, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter. It's all, it's all over the gamut. And it's not, you know, like we, I read both Stephanie and I subscribe to Medium. But Medium, like for me, is like, it's either like Apple developer issues or women's issues. <laughs> like it seems to be like. There's like these heavy concentrations of like a couple of different things, but Pocket as a source of information, not just as a place to put it and read it, is actually very good because it's a broad, they have a broad range of um, topics that they go out and grab. And it's a lot of it's long form, which again, I, I feel like long form reading is a skill that's, uh, we're just losing, I think, as a, as a people or a society. Or was it Pocket that you could... Uh 
or maybe it was Instapaper. You could send it to、mm -hmm. your Kindle, and like you get a weekly digest、oh, of your pocket、um, stuff. That might have been an Instapaper. I don't wonder if Pocket has. I, that could have been. That could have been a Kindle thing. Yeah, that could. That、be. was a, that was one reason to use a Kindle.、Uh, I checked out on Kindle just because I, it's just too much I read that isn't there. I can't、right. read on that device.、Right. You know, I, I like the idea of it. I like no, the, but I know, want I, color. I want images. I agree、yep. with you. Yeah. Yep. Um. That would be so. There's a couple of things that I like the Kindle for.、Mm -hmm. with, with the Kindle, you can highlight passages and you can write notes. And then、right. the, there are note taker apps like Obsidian that will automatically sync with your notes. So yeah, you can, so that works in the Kindle app, by the way. You can you, you know you don't have to have a Kindle device to do that. That's true. And actually, frankly,、yeah. I use the Kindle app more than I use the Kindle, even though I have a Kindle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a good point. Good point. I wish they could get it right. Like even stuff like if you read like comic books or、um, those kinds of things. You can't access those on a Kindle e-reader for the most part. Yeah.、Um, and even if you could, why would you want to? You want a bigger screen. You want color. You know that kind of thing. I. It's just I don't know. Cookbooks are tough, or can be you know, or impossible to read. Programming books are horrible on Kindle devices. Yeah, but it. it <laughs> yeah, but you can search them and stuff. So what I ended up doing is I I, no, I, I read them in the in the Kindle Reader app or.、Uh, You go to read.amazon.com and read it there on a web yep, page. Yeah, the cloud reader. Yeah. yeah.、Um, so I'm reading them there because then I can copy and paste and,、yep. and, uh, and stuff like that.、Um, so there are some advantages. Yeah, no, I, actually, I, use the cloud, I use Cloud Reader a lot in that programming Windows series because I owned a lot of older Microsoft books. Right. And it was neat to be able to search、yeah. through it and look for things. Who has room for all those books? I have so many programs. Well, if you're looking、books. for some kindling for your next house fire, <laughs> books are great. <laughs> I, I, So I got the new Python learning Python and programming Python, the new O'Reilly Python books. Each of them is literally four or five inches、oh, high,、mm -hmm. but they make an excellent stand for your webcam. I found. Right. <laughs> Actually, my wife used、uh, Windows Seven Secrets as her monitor stand for about eight the years. The Delphi Bible probably、Super、would Bible,、yep. really be. Oh、perfect. yeah, hardcover. Hardcover. Yeah. Solid. A very stable base for almost anything. A foundation of a house. <laughs> you can build a house on it. <laughs> yep. Mary Jo Foley, Enterprise Pick <laughs> Numero Uno.、Um, my first pick is about secured core. So you know how you've already got secured core PCs, secured core servers.、Um, I think even Azure HCI has a secured core version. Well, now there is Edge Secured Core, and this isn't Edge the browser. This is Edge computing devices. So. Secured Core is a certification. It's a cert it's a security certification. So in the case of IoT devices, it's going to be a certification for devices、um, that Microsoft says are secure end to end. So it's everything from、uh, the processor, the firmware, the OS,、uh, the way they encrypt data on the device when it's in transit. All these things, if you pass a certification, are、um, Promised by Microsoft, there are already a couple of devices that have passed the、uh, Edge Secure Core standard or certification. One of them is a NUC. Intel's NUC 11、uh. Pro Mini PC、hmm. has passed it.、Um, there's an、oh. ASUS device. There's a Lenovo Think Edge SE 30,、um, and they're all listed in the Azure Certified Device Catalog. So the reason Microsoft's doing this is. One of the biggest places for security breaches is in firmware, right? It's not just、um, hackers attacking you through an app. It happens right on the device. And as there are more and more IoT devices, Microsoft and its partners think it would be great if we could secure things end to end, from all the way from an edge device up to the cloud itself. So this is where they're going with this. And Secure Core, Edge Secure Core, got announced just this week. Very nice. Edge Secure. We need this. We do. Enterprise pick number two. So、um, Microsoft announced in <laughs> April Windows Auto Patch. Windows Auto Patch is kind of like the next version of Windows Update for Business. It's a whole series of things that you can do, and as a, as an administrator, to roll out security patches, almost like.、Um, In rings, almost like the Windows Insider program, so you can control inside your organization who gets which patches, how quickly people get them. You can have subsets in, of groups of people who get them. Unfortunately, when this came out recently、um, in final form, 
a few publications wrote, okay, that's the end of Patch Tuesday. Now that there's Windows Auto Patch, we don't need Patch Tuesday anymore, and that's over. Well, this was our last Patch Tuesday, and it's done. I don't know where they got that idea, but <laughs> wishful thinking maybe? I don't know. But um, Microsoft actually had to put out a statement saying, just because we have uh, this new Windows Auto Patch option for some enterprise users does not mean it is the end of Patch Tuesday. So if you're getting your hopes up about not having to drink your Patch Tuesday cocktails anymore, sorry, you're going to have to keep drinking them. Patch Tuesday is not over. If you're an enterprise, you might want to start using this Windows Auto Patch feature. But Patch Tuesday, I think, is going to go on for the foreseeable future. I think I'll be gone before Patch Tuesday is gone. <laughs> yeah, you were clear about that when we talked uh, about this so. Auto Patch service. Yeah. Uh, it's, you know, yeah. you know what it really is? It's these blogs that, uh, it's link bait, basically. It is. They want to write. But then it got out of control and people are like, right. oh, there's no more Patch Tuesday, right? right? <laughs> right. They want to, the end of Patch Tuesday. Yeah. And people go, what? Yeah. But no, yeah. obviously no. not. Unless no. you're an enterprise, you know, user. Uh, <laughs> death taxes and patch Tuesday. I like that idea. Not going away. Yeah, not going away. <laughs> Beer pick of the week. Yes. So it is, uh, June is Pride Month. Next, This weekend is the giant Pride Parade in New York City. Oh, boy. So why not a beer to commemorate Here Pride? Here, too, Sunday month of Pride. is Pride, the big parade, yes. yeah. Um, the beer of the week is from Torch and Crown in New York. It's called Rainbows Everywhere. Uh -huh. And you, yes, it is another hazy IPA. Okay, but here's why <laughs> I made you a pick. Not just I because of that. Um, it's a Pride-themed beer with the rainbow. They brew it every June for Pride Month. This I didn't know till I read about this today. It's six point nine percent to commemorate the nineteen sixty nine protests oh around my gay God, rights. The Stonewall riots. Oh, right. My so they God. actually tweaked the ABV <laughs> so it could be exactly six point nine. Hysterical. Cool. <laughs> That's and hysterical. a portion of the profits go to LGBTQ plus causes in New York City. Nice. It's your perfect pride beer, basically. And I know a lot of breweries do pride themed beers this month. So if you don't have your own Torch and Crown, I'm sure you can find one at your local. I'm sure Lagunitas has some. I'm guessing. I'm sure they do. they do. I would guess they do too. Yeah, yeah. 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 This looks nice though. I like it. It's a beautiful can. Beautiful. And Torch yeah. and Crown's good. They are. That'd be a yeah. nice iPhone wallpaper. You know, it's beautiful, <laughs> isn't it? It actually is quite beautiful. Uh, <laughs> with the Statue of Liberty and silhouette and everything. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, Mary Jo, you've done it again. You got me drinking beer. It. Yep. <laughs> Thank you so much. Mary Jo Foley is at ZDNet. That's all about Microsoft.com. Uh, that's her blog. Uh, Paul Therott is at Therott.com. And we now know, in case you missed it, July. Are you going to do it before or after the cruise? Oh, boy. Remember, you got a <laughs> week a in point. July yeah, that you're point. not going to be around. I think you should push it after the cruise. I hate to say it, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see. All All right. Right. It's in good enough right. shape. He's getting ready to what build. What are we doing, by the way, when you guys are on the cruise? Are we still doing Windows Weekly? Hell though? yeah. Good. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to sneak a bunch of special guests you on. You can do stuff. Sure. I've already you do thought about want. this. And, 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 you know, Paul, you and oh, I should probably record a greeting or something that we can send off. We should. You know, <laughs> standing by a glacier. a glacier or something. Yeah, getting licked you know? by a husky or something, you know, standing sure. next to a bald eagle. Or we'll figure bear. out something. We'll send we'll send something back nice. your way. Nice. So, okay. Here we are in beautiful downtown Anchorage. Yep, I go flying down the side of a glacier. <laughs> <laughs> we'll try to do something TikTok worthy, worthy of the yes. eternal spring. Paul died as he lived, stupidly. <laughs> <laughs> we did not see that polar bear coming, I got to say. <laughs> Therot.com, and then, uh, of course, right now, the field guide for uh, Windows 10 is at leanpub.com. Mm -hmm. Keep your eye peeled. Field guide for Windows 11 coming soon. If you're going to go to Windows 11, you better get the field guide. And, of course, read those articles about uh, 22H2 on therot.com. We do Windows Weekly on a Tuesday. It's supposed to be around 11 a.m. Wednesday. 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 Okay, so there's my, my <laughs> problem number one. I'm here on the wrong day. 
damn it. It's supposed to be Wednesday, 11 a.m., 2 p.m. Pacific, 1800 UTC. You can watch Today, us. Today, Mary Jo screwed up the start time. Yeah, Sorry, everybody. No, I was late, nice. and then Mary Jo couldn't hear us, and it was a mess. Uh, but you could go to uh, live.twit.tv and watch us mess around with equipment, trying to get it working. That's fun. Uh, that's the live behind-the-scenes stream that goes pretty much all the time. Uh, if you're watching live, chat live with us. There's a open to all chat room at irc.twit.tv. If you prefer Discord, you might want to consider joining Club Twit. That's one of the benefits. That plus ad-free versions of all the shows, the Twit Plus feed, all the shows that we don't put out on our main feed. Uh, and if you want to know more, seven bucks a month, just go to club twit.tv slash club twit. Twit.tv slash club twit. Uh, we do put the show out for free to all ad supported at twit.tv slash ww. There is also a uh, boy. Remember when we used to record in that little room? Boy, that was no, uh, that was I terrible. Really. Yeah, was that a thing? <laughs> Man, glad we're in the big room now. Where's all the hats? Yeah, that is an old picture. <laughs> I was gonna say, there's a Google. What is that called? A Pixel Book or something? Yeah, that is. There's a Pixel Book there. Wow, that dates that. Holy cow. Uh, we'll get some. We'll get a photographer in here. Of course, nothing has changed other than the set, right? Other than my hair. And and no, yeah, you maybe you're a little grayer. Maybe I don't know. We're all we we're all pretty gray at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also, a YouTube channel dedicated uh, with more than a thousand subscribers. I'm happy to say. Uh, wow. Just rub that in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Well, not much more. It looks no, that like must be nice. It's actually pretty close. Uh, <laughs> uh, really, that looks like not many at all. Uh, wow. <laughs> I guess. Subscribe if you will. 000. Mash the red button. Bing the bell so you get the notifications. Do that thing. Best thing, really, and the, one of the reasons we, you know, we're not dependent on YouTube. We like it if you subscribe in your podcast player. That way, you get it automatically. You can listen to it wherever you are, anytime you want, or watch. There's audio and video uh, for Windows Weekly. Thank you, everybody, for uh, being here. You dozers rock. We'll see you next time on Windows Week. Oh, wait a minute. I won't be here next week. I will not see you next time. I'm going oh, no. back east to visit mom. Uh, nice. So it'll be uh, Micah Sargent hosting gonna, the show. Are you going to be in Providence? Going to Providence, yeah. Nice. I'm looking forward to it. Go out for some Italian food. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're going to go to Atwell's mm -hmm. Avenue, and we're going to go mm -hmm. uh, have some clam cakes and lobster roll. Yeah. And, nice. Uh, some fire some, water. Some, yeah. Well, I'm going <laughs> to some coffee milk for sure. I mean, I'm excited. Mm -hmm. Dell's Lemonade. All the stuff sure. I grew up with. It's going to be a lot of fun, yeah. Nice. So uh, I will miss you next week, but we'll be back uh, in two weeks. I'll be back in two weeks, and Paul and Mary Jo will be here with Micah next week. Thanks, everybody. See you next time. Bye-bye. Hey, I'm Rod Pyle, editor of Ad Astra Magazine, and each week I'm joined by Tarek Malik, the editor-in-chief over at Space.com, in our new This Week in Space podcast. Every Friday, Tarek and I take a deep dive into the stories that define the new space age. What's NASA up to? When will Americans once again set foot on the moon? And how about those samples from the Perseverance rover? When are those coming home? What the heck has Elon Musk done now? In addition to all the latest and greatest in space exploration, we'll take an occasional look at bits of spaceflight history that you probably never heard of, and all with an eye towards having a good time along the way. Check us out in your favorite podcatcher.